for those of you here in the paddock today and for those of you tuning in from live around the world, welcome to St. Petersburg, Florida and to Tropicana Field, home of the Tampa Bay Rays and this weekend, home of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. My name's Xander Clements here live on Car Chaser with Ron John Ebersole. Ron John, we've been treated to great racing action so far in 2022. Pompano Beach had that amazing slide job with oh. Renato Yader David. Talked about that with Renato as soon as he showed up. Had some uh, some great racing in mini and micro and junior. Senior got a little bit spread out, but it's a right. little bit of a bigger field here this week. They're at 226 entries. We were 228 at Pompano Beach with two extra classes, the Briggs Senior and uh, Briggs Masters classes. Those classes not with us here in St. Pete, which means our schedule a little bit more compact. We're going to be doing qualifying, the opening round of heats for everybody today. Heats two and three tomorrow. Ron John, I'm no, I know you're excited. You've Absolutely. been texting me all month long. I've been waiting for this and uh, really happy to be back here in Tampa. It's been a couple of years for us. Uh, with all the COVID stuff. So I'm uh, really, really happy to be back here in the uh, St. Petersburg, Tampa area. And I know a lot of the folks down from this area are happy to be here as well. And of course, all of our Canadian friends who've, you know, are on their way back to the great white north here come Monday, really happy to be down here in the Sunshine State. Oh, definitely here. And and of course, you know, I mean, the, the, the big thing here for this weekend is, is that this is the last parking lot these guys are going to race on right. before we go to Las Vegas. And, and it's definitely a little bit rougher. We're going to kind of give you some of our different camera angles we've got. We've got one really good elevated shot that we're on right now, two lower to the ground shots, one here in the back sector. You're not going to miss too much in this final section of the racetrack. In fact, we'll go through a little bit of a track preview here in just a moment as your VLR juniors make their way around. Let's go ahead and we'll take it to that as Caleb Gaffera leads them here for the opening qualifying session and give you guys a little bit of an idea of what the drivers are going to be experiencing here this weekend in St. Petersburg. Welcome guys to Tropicana Field here in St. Petersburg, Florida for your track preview. My name is Xander Clemens with Kart Chaser. Normally I'd take you around the full layout, but I figured it'd be cool if we changed it up a little bit this week and give you guys some variety. So first up to give you to the first sector of corners is Parallel USA's Alessandro Tulio. Ale? Yeah, here we are at Tropicana Field, a really bumpy track. Um, I like the track personally. It's not that long, only 35 seconds. And yeah, like I said, really bumpy. Uh, not many passing opportunities. Here we are in the main straight. Going down into turn one. One of the few passing spots in the track. Uh, really bumpy corner. Here you want to kind of take a tight entry. I know it looks like a late apex, but you want to take a tight entry. If not, as soon as you get off the grip line here, it gets really loose. So you want to get a really tight entry. And then here it's where it gets bumpy. So you got to hold the steering wheel really hard. So exiting turn one, you want to get a tight exit because the run down to turn two is not that long. Uh, if you get a wider exit, then this corner is going to be really tight and that's just going to scrub speed all the way down to three. Exiting turn one, you want to get a tight exit just to not wash off too much. because If not, it's going to be too tight for turn two. So yeah, tight exit set up good for turn two so you could get on power sooner and have less turn in input. Exiting turn two, you want to not stay too tight because you're going to scrub too much speed. Uh, also, you don't want to go too wide because it's really bumpy on the outside. And that's going to also ruin your speed. So yeah, mid-exit and carry as much amount of speed into turn three as possible. Now I'm going to be handing off the mic to PSL Karting's Margin Kramers. All right, I'm Marin Kramers. I'm racing driver for PSL Karting. I'm here to take you through turn uh, number three, four, five, and into six. So coming into number three here, it's very important to get a good run, um, good exit on this three and four section. So you want to be nice and smooth on the entry. Don't break too late because it's very bumpy. So yeah, it's very bumpy. You have to break kind of early. Make sure you get a good exit here because coming into four, this is, this is probably where, the point where you want to go on the throttle. So you want to be flat out here. Going into four, don't, too, don't do too many steering movements because it's just going to kill your speed. We've got a gun got a long run up ahead into five which is a flat out kink and then all the way up to six as well all right so now we're heading into five which is just a flat out kink um, but you can see here the, the road down behind me it's very rough so you want to be wherever the car is not touching the ground is the most so it's just going to kill your speed if the car's putting you out um, going into six will be a great passing opportunity and going into six will be magic cards aj meyer taking you further 
Thank you, Marin. My name's AJ Myers, and I'm going to take you through turn six and seven of uh, the St. Pete track. You come into turn six here, and it's really bumpy on the brakes. Pretty good opportunity to pass. Not many on this track, but really sketchy on the brakes. You really got to control the wheel. The main importance in turn six is really just to hold a nice tight exit because it sets you up best for turn seven. If you wash out too wide of turn six, you're going to get a bad, bad run through turn seven. So holding the tight exit out of turn six, it sets you up for turn seven, but you have a really big bump up here that you really have to power over and just keep the cart under control as you enter turn seven. And the shifter carts, we're just giving it a quick lift back to gas and we're through turn seven. Exit of turn seven, you just keep it flat out, use all the track you can. I've seen a couple guys get it wrong. This last practice session, someone ended up pretty hard on the outside barrier, blew it wide open. But sets you up for a, maybe a passing opportunity into turn eight, but I'll pass it off to Jake French. Thanks, AJ. Um, I'm Jake French here now with PSL Karting. Uh, starting to take you around turn eight right now. Uh, this corner is uh, pretty tight, second gear and a shifter. Um, I imagine it's pretty slow and a single speed as well. Passing opportunity may be kind of limited. Um, you could probably throw it in there, but may be kind of aggressive and a late move. Um, just like the rest of the track, it is pretty bumpy. Uh, there's a pretty big bump right now on exit. Um, in a shifter, we're coming off in second gear. We hit the bump and uh, grab third gear. Walking around here, you want to hug it a little bit tight to set yourself up for this uh, next right-hander. The right-hander's almost flat. As the grip comes up, we're getting pretty close to going flat out. Um, we usually, if we grab third about right here, then we hold third all the way through around the right-hander. This, this is a pretty fast corner. G-forces are definitely pretty high. As you can see, you know, we got quite a few bumps. Um, get, carts get a little unsettled. You know, it's the name of the game to hold onto the wheel try to keep the cart straight and uh, you know not busting out sideways so taking you to turn 10 um, this is a very very vital part of the track um, you got to set yourself up for the last corner leaning onto the longest straightaway um, in a shifter uh, we have a gearbox so we can run a little bit tighter line we can go straight through turn 10 and go straight into turn 11 um, in a single speed you may want to be out just a little bit wider so you can set yourself up and get a run down the straightaway um, this part of the track, the turns 9, 10, 11, probably could all be single file. Um, not really many passing opportunities until you get to the main straightaway. This corner, uh, just like many others, um, you know, it's pretty bumpy. There's a pretty big bump in the middle that can unsettle the cart. Um, but it, there's uh, fresh asphalt right here with the black stuff on it. It gets really, really high grip. So you can get the power down pretty good and lead yourself onto the straightaway. Coming out of the corner. You gotta come out wide all the way next to the barriers. Grab all the way to sixth gear down the straightaway. Coming out of turn 11, that's a full lap around Rock Cups USA, Tropicana Field. So big thanks again, of course, to our pros here, Alessandro Datulio, Marion Crummers, AJ Myers, and Jake French to kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea of what the drivers are dealing with here in St. Petersburg, obviously, um, a, a rougher racetrack and a rougher pavement surface and you can see the carts bouncing a little bit more so than where they were uh, you know when we were back at Pompano Beach I mean that was a, honestly a really really smooth parking lot layout here Ron John Just compared to what they're seeing lot, right, right now yeah uh, I couldn't help but notice that as I was standing down here towards turn number one as they come into one that left rear tire is actually bouncing through turn number one so yeah there's it's pretty rough uh, I've heard that throughout the, the last couple of days the track's rough. I said, welcome to Sebring. I mean, uh, welcome to St. Pete. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, yep. just think of it that way. Yeah, and it's it's gnarly. And I was talking with French especially, and he's like, you know, I was like, do you think it'll get better, you know, as the rubber goes down? Is the rubber going to kind of naturally, like, fill in some of the gaps? Sure. He's like, well, maybe. But the biggest thing is that the rubber going down means they get to carry more speed to the center of the corner. So they're hitting the bumps faster and faster and faster as this weekend goes on. It gets rougher and rougher and rougher. And again, you can see the carts just hopping as they come on through. So checkered flag in the air. Let's give them our rundown here, Ron John. Aiden Ingrata, the doctor, the scientist, as you like to call him, <laughs> tops the board, 17 thousandths of a second. The gaps wow. are really, really tight here uh, as Ingrata tops the board, 17 thousandths up on Charlie Smith. G3, Agairos uh, there in third, Cooper Shipman fourth, Caleb Gaffera fifth. And again, we are less than uh, a tenth of a second for the entire top five, less than a tenth of a second for the top six, going back to Christian Cameron in the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed. Then it's Stephen Miller, Elio Meza, Graham Tremel, Christian Cantu, Soberanis. 
uh, the Goodwood Cartways uh, Mexico driver. All right. Four tenths off, but a tenth and a quarter for the top seven. And you're going to see that here on a racetrack that is short. I mean, we our poll time here in VLR Junior, 36, 5, 8, 2. Um, so those gaps will be a little bit tighter than, than when we, you know, we go to a longer racetrack. There's more time to be found, more time to be lost. Um, but still, that, that's, that bodes very well for some good racing here later on today to have them be that tight in times on qualifying. Yeah, and, and uh, again, uh, it's obvious to me, based on the times I've been seeing over the last couple of days, these guys are definitely feeling a lot more comfortable out there, putting on some really good times. Uh, 36, 582 for Aiden and Grata. So right now, Aiden, the Canadian driver, Speed Concepts on the pole. Charlie Smith, the Nash Motorsports driver. The 812 will be on the outside of the pole. And uh, like I said, 1,700 a second. Is that, is that it? 17,000. 17,000, excuse me. Yeah, wow. so very tight. Well, we'll see who Good comes start. out on top in qualifying for the rest of the classes here. We've got one in the books. VLR Junior is wrapped up, and it's time to take our first commercial break of the afternoon. We'll come back. VLR Senior, currently on grid here in St. Petersburg. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Florida here live for round number two of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. We are outside at Tropicana Field. The VLR seniors have just been released onto the racetrack here. And, Ron John, you and I were comparing numbers. They're coming to complete their first lap across the line. Jeremy Fletcher uh, was the uh, driver to beat, driver who put on a clinic back in P Pompano Beach for round number one. And uh, he kicks things off with a nice yeah. benchmark of a 37.462, half a second clear on the field. That said... Uh, we do have one other big name joining the field here this weekend, along with a, no a couple of others. One that was kind of a surprise to many is Ryan Norberg yeah, with the Rawlison Performance here. Group. Absolutely. Not only here, but not running Rock Sr. in the 125 class. He's dropped down to the 100cc VLR Sr. class. Really cool. It's, great to, it's always great to have him out here racing with us. But, yeah, to see him drop down and, and race with the VLR Seniors, they've got to be pretty excited about that as well, having him in there to race against. For right sure. now, Jeremy continues to be out there in front, obviously just now coming back by the start-finish again. Right, you got two Gary Willis trained drivers, Ryan Norberg, when he was coming up before he got his first deal with PSL Karting and Burrell Art, came up with the Gary Willis Racing Camp and got, was under the same coaching. And as he comes across the line now here, he'll go to the pole, 37-19. So two drivers on the... Uh, uh, a graduate of the GWR camp and, and the current prodigy right. in, uh, in Jeremy Fletcher. Both of them with about a half second margin back to Adam Ali as Fletcher will improve that time here. He, Fletcher the first one on the racetrack. Norberg one of the last ones out. Uh, Callum Baxter in the Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic. One of many drivers like Jeremy Fletcher pulling double duty. They're yep. running VLR Senior and Rock Senior. Uh, Baxter a Canadian national champion in Briggs competition as over the last two seasons started to push himself to run more 100cc and 125cc action. And I don't believe he was with us at round number one, so that could be another name that um, is starting to really, uh, you know, make his presence known on American soil because he does not have a lot of U.S. starts. I believe that was Jeremy Fletcher there going into turn number one. Maybe jump up and take a look, see what's going on. Just qualifying here. And already he's actually starting to spread out there from... Uh, 
second place driver. Yeah, he put two and a half tenths back to Baxter that Ryan time back by. Down into fourth now this time, so. Right, but again, remember with Just Nor a couple of laps here too. Yeah, with Norberg as he comes across this time here, Bam, he's right. got, he is one of the last ones out, so we're one of the last ones to update. Um, and we'll see when everyone's tires peak. Norberg, like you said, jumps back to second, so that puts two tenths between Norberg and Baxter. A half a tenth back from Fletcher for Norberg. Um, but Jeremy Fletcher right now in the Gary Willis Racing Tony Kart. Right now your fastest driver, and he's got a nice gap here. We've got um, uh, Jenna, Tommy, and Kendall Hedge here. They're going to be pulling uh, a number of our uh, top contenders throughout the paddock area to talk to us here today. Excellent. So um, I believe uh, they'll be pulling Aiden Ingrata here shortly and uh, getting a chat with, uh, with the, the, the mad scientist, as you like to call him. He's uh, the professor. The professor, that's right. He is the professor. Every bit of the, smartness here. Yes, he is. He's uh, a fine young driver, and it would be interesting to hear what he has to say about his qualifying, uh, other than the fact that he, he's exactly where he wants to be. Well, we've got three and a half minutes left in VLR Senior. Let's send it down to our Kendall Hedge, who is standing alongside our first pole award winner of the day, VLR Junior top qualifier, Aiden Ingrata. Oh, a little bit of technical difficulties here. We'll take a look at the camera and see if we can talk to Aiden here in just a moment. In the meantime, still a lot of bumping and banging going on out there as they come through turn number one. Actually oh, got a card around right there. Rook Berry, good catch Rook there, Ron yes, John. 924. Yeah, unfortunate for the Iron Rock Motorsports hey, well, Tony Kart driver. Good He's having a good run. I believe Blake was actually, uh, Brooke, Brooke that is, was having a pretty good run so far until that incident there in turn number one. Going to obviously drop her way down the uh, Yeah, she was closing in on the top ten on times. I don't know if she got any damage there in the incident there in qualifying, but um, that's obviously going to mess her up and throw her out of rhythm a little bit. Jeremy Fletcher right now, two tenths up on Ryan Norberg. Uh, then it's Wes Duchak, who's a half tenth back from his RPG teammate. Weston had a, a great run in Pompano Beach for a driver that's just starting to really make uh, his development, um, you know, uh, strides with the RPG camp. He signed right. with them after Las Vegas last year with the Super Nationals. Ran the opening round of both the Scusa Winter Series and the Florida Winter Tour with them. Um, and, uh, you know, he was on track for a podium, I think, had a mechanical failure in Pompano, but um, was one of the second or third fastest drivers kind of all weekend long there. Second fiddle to, to Jeremy Fletcher. Now he's got his teammate in Ryan Norberg, who is, you know, a very, very smart guy, very good driver coach. Um, it's kind of always able to elevate uh, the RPG team, which is why he is where he is and respected in the way that he is here. And with as we look down the go. list of names here, Xander, I look down there to the fourth position. And I remember the last time I saw Daniel Ali, well, of course, earlier, obviously, in uh, Pompano Beach, but back in uh, Las Vegas, the last time we saw him there, he was under that fence. Oh, he yeah. lost his brakes coming into a particular area. When it did, it just shot him right off the track and went underneath the fence. Not a scratch. It was unbelievable. It was certainly great to see him now up there uh, in that second position. Uh, the Canadian driver, a 36 798. Uh, Norberg now in that third spot. His brother, Adam Ali, now up in the fourth with a 36 922. And right now it's still Fletcher with that 36 700. No, excuse me, 36 631. Right now is the uh, is top speed to so be. far. Yeah, yeah that's and here with good. a minute to go. So let's see what we got here for the 922. No improvement that time, Ron John. He was four hundredths off the pace of uh, his best at a 6.7. His pole lap a 6.3. So he would have just gone pole again last time on that lap because the next best is a 36.79. So a uh, very impressive run here for the GWR Tony Kart of Jeremy Fletcher to put one over on it. Daniel Ali, Ryan Norberg, Weston Duchak. All of the top drivers have completed 11 laps so far. Uh, unfortunate issue for Grayson Regin in the techno cart. He is down in ninth. Had to pull in a little early, and uh, there he goes. Back even quicker. 36-546 here with 10 seconds to go. And I, I wanted to make one note. We were talking about the fact that we do have drivers from all over the world. 
the gentleman down here, the uh, 993 of Ahmad Barazi, is from Syria. Wow. Racing with us this week. That's a long way that from home. That is a long way from home for sure. So welcome, Ahmad Barazi, to our uh, The Rock group. Hope you enjoy your weekend, and good luck to you. Well, checkered flag in the air, so we'll uh, take you through your top ten here as they come across the line. Fletcher will end his session, cooling the tires down a little bit on the cool-down lap, and getting ready to bring it into the scale line as Jeremy Fletcher scores the pole in VLR Senior Qualifying. Daniel Ali second, Weston Duchak third, Ryan Norberg fourth to put two RPGs third and fourth behind the REM Cosmic and GWR Tony Cart. And then it's a pair of Racing Edge Motorsports drivers in fifth and sixth between Adam Ali and Callum Baxter. Uh, doing an even split there. Three Canadians, three Americans in the top six. Ron John, take us through the rest of our top ten. All right, we'll go on to uh, number seven here, and that's going to be the Iron Rock driver of uh, Brooke Berry. Berry able to recover and get back up there and put up the eighth best time, 9.24 at Grayson Rizidzen. Uh, in the 9.84, we'll end up in ninth, the Techno Kart driver and the PSL car karting driver of Gabriel Carr. The 9.04 will end up in that tenth position. So the field is set for that group. Waiting for our next group, which will be our mini rockers. Big group of mini rock here again this weekend. And they'll be coming our way here right after our next commercial break. You can see everyone's getting creative with the barriers. It makes it a little bit tricky to watch. So you're trying to find anything to get on an elevated surface and keep an eye on the action here. Live from Tropicana Field, it's the second round of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour live on Cart Chaser. Stick with us. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching, to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. So the mini rockers have been released onto the racetrack for their opening qualifying session. And as uh, they make their way through the out lap here, we'll come to put uh, lap number one uh, or start lap number one, Salvador de la Vecchia first on your screen. Of course, he had that fantastic battle with Isaac Malkett here in Pompano Beach for round number one. Both drivers uh, gave him one of the, the cutest, nicest interviews right after his, uh, when Jenna, Jenna went to go and ask him if they had be willing to talk about that awesome finish. They asked if they could do the interview together, showed a lot of respect for each other, and a big kudos to the parents of Salvador and of Isaac for yes. racing two class act young men. That was really, really, really neat. Good sportsmanship. It's always great to see good sportsmanship. I enjoy that. Oh, we got one driver turned around. It is the CRG 105 machine. Uh, I believe that driver hasn't even crossed the line yet, so we're not even sure which one that is. But it's a massive field of mini rockers, I and mean, we had a good field. Uh, last month, but again, as we mentioned, we're up about another 30 total drivers from where we were in Pompano uh, of the rock classes, losing out on the brakes classes, but ending up around the right. same total number. So everything kind of ticked up a, 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 just a smidge. And uh, at the end of lap number one, it's the PSL karting Burrell to Max Christie going quickest, the 105 CRG trying to get up and get going ultimately not going to be able to do so. The officials will pull that cart behind the wall and we'll go back to the front of the field as we try and find where everyone else is going to be at. There's the CRG at the back of the screen. Carson Weinberg, he drops to the end of this train. Looks like Luis Umana, Sarah Bradley, and I believe Marco Romero all in that group here, chasing the 192 of uh, Umana. 
Look at Sarah Dupont, Faith and the Oh no, Alan Bonilla, sorry, the 192. Yeah, and you're right, Faith and Sarah Made a great run, great lap for him right there. As I say that, he goes dropping down to second, and there goes Jack Eilife, the Iron Rock driver, a 39.406. So that puts the 144 right now on the pole. Asher Ockstein up into third. Isaac Malquit, who we talked about just a little while ago. And Isaac now sitting in fourth. And as I say that, Carson Weinberg, this SCR driver, the 111 now up into the fourth position. Again, just getting started here. Just a couple of laps in the bank here for our qualifying run of the mini rockers at our 2022 Florida Winter Tour. The 24th time here in Florida for the Florida Winter Tour. Great to be here, uh, kind of a overcast kind of day, but nice nonetheless, got a little breeze. Oh, oh. Just had a cart tire go off somewhere out there on the track, not really sure exactly where that is, but there goes the cart without the tire. Oh, that is uh, the 146, Alessandro's racing entry of Francisco Ruiz. He was in 11th for the moment, has now bumped to 13th, as They'll shuffle at the top. Max Christie, now your quickest over Jack Eilith. Carson Weinberg, Salvador de la Vecchia, and Surad Bun drops to P5. We do have um, Gabriel, Balog. Yeah, Gabriel Balog moving up the order. He goes to third of the Magic Kart Canadian driver. But uh, four and a half minutes to go here in mini qualifying, and I believe our Genitami has caught up with the fastest qualifier in VLR senior, Jeremy Fletcher. P1 in our VLR senior qualifying. Jeremy, tell me about your weekend. I mean, it's been pretty good. We're decently fast in both, but we were definitely faster in the VLR, so glad we could get the P1, hoping for a good heat race. Yeah, have you run into any challenges this weekend during practice? Uh, just the bumps. I mean, it's pretty bumpy, but that's about it. Yeah. So if you could change one thing about this track, would it be the bumps? Yeah. What would be better about it? Uh, I think it'd just be smoother and just easier to drive around. All right, thank you so much, Jeremy. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, I mean, that, that's about it. You know, the drivers definitely are, you know, but I think there's something to be said for putting the drivers in a box sometimes, you yeah, know. Right. You can't always let the drivers be happy. If you let them be, you know, when a driver's happiest, it's typically when they're leading a race by about 30 seconds. Exactly. Um, so and, if, and, and then they're not as happy as they will be in those couple of laps, right? Right. So once I, it's done. Once it's done, then it, it's gone. So, you know, I, I, I'm all for kind of making these guys get in awkward situations. I mean, obviously... You know, you get a racetrack that's a little bit too rough, and it starts to eat the chassis away. And, and I think there is a little bit of that going on here. I mean, you can see some of the patchiness of uh, the pavement, especially coming here into turn number six. It's a yes. little bit awkward there. You saw Jack Eilif get completely sideways in the 144 Iron Rock Motorsports Parallel. But, um, you know, overall, I, I think that, um, you know, it, it, at times not doing what the drivers want to do produces some really good racing because you kind of make them squirm a little bit and they have to get creative and and shifty and uh you know and make moves that maybe they're right. not fully comfortable Absolutely you know they, you gotta, to be a little more creative for sure yeah you got to take them out of their comfort zone because like i said if they stay in their comfort zone they're just going to pound laps like it's testing all day long so two and a half minutes to go carson weinberg crg now tops the boards in the speed concepts racing number 111 14 thousandths up over akt racing teams Cart Republic entry of Isaac Malkett. Then it's Jack Iliff within the same tenth of a second, bumped to third. Salvador de la Vecchia's San Antonio Racing Parallels fourth. Peyton Serrat wins AKT KR. Puts a couple of AKT Cart Republics inside the top five. Then it's Christy, Oxstein, Sarah Bradley, Ty Fisher, Alan Bonilla, the top ten currently, Ron John. But, I mean, it, it, it could shuffle at any moment. There's still two minutes to go. As I look down the list here, uh Again, already those, those top 10, you could kind of pull everybody from there and go, oh, wow, that would be an amazing race. And then you look down from there and you go, oh, no, but then we're going to bring in these other 16 here because it's going to be an even, even better race. And as they continue to move along here, I'm seeing Ty Fisher move up. Asher Oxstein's now up into that eighth spot. Max Christie uh, continues to, well, drop down actually a little bit now for Max. He's down into that seventh position. But mm -hmm. Peyton Sarah Dupont up there, Jack Eilife. Eilife had a tremendous run in Vegas. Uh, Sarah Bradley again showing she's got speed. So uh, just have to wait and see. Just qualifying. And the, the, but we know the, the race is going to be incredible. And the midfield starting to tighten a little yep. bit too. Ace and Dramalev moves up into the top ten. 
He closes up to within that three-tenth buffer. Ty Fisher, Gabriel Belog is outside the top ten by two thousandths of a second right now. And a new pole sitter, Carson Weinberg, CRG to the top. We got a driver in the barrier also. That is the 180. Looks to be a prime power team entry. Matthew Roach. Is that Matthew Roach? Oh, yeah, Matthew Roach. Okay, the right. Canadian driver was 24th at the time. They'll get that card out of the way. That is uh, entering turn number six, and so the officials have cleared it. Makes the barriers a little bit awkward going in, but it seems to be a little too wide for anyone to want to run up next to. Uh, 35 seconds to go, though. Carson Weinberg, a 39-009. 27 thousandths right now, the margin. He adds a half-tenth to it. Looking very, very strong here at the end of this session is the CRG of Carson Weinberg. A 38.969, only driver in the 38 second bracket, and with 20 seconds to go, Ron John, it's close, but it would have to be a buzzer beater It'd to knock to, him it off. It would definitely have to be a buzzer beater. And, uh, you know, as we look down our list here, too, I wanted to make mention I see Alessandro Truchot. Alessandro, great to see him here racing with us this weekend as well. But right now, it looks like it's going to be Carson Weinberg getting ready to take the checkered flag here at the start finish. It'll wrap up qualifying for our minis. Yeah, let's see. First driver across the line is Ty Fisher. He was 11th. Weinberg's next does not improve. No improvement for Sarah Bradley. She sits fourth. Malquid had already gone in, so he's right there in second. De La Vecchia does not improve in third. Max Christie in seventh. Dramalov in ninth. Waiting on Jack Isla, Faith and Surad put an Asher Ockstein. Here goes Iliff across the line. No improvement. Nothing for Ockstein. Faith and Sarad Pun will be the last one inside the top ten. And I believe he may have pulled in this this current lap. Yes, yes. So indeed, that ends the session, and it ends with Carson Weinberg on top over Isaac Melkett, Salvador de la Vecchia, Sarah Bradley, and Jack. I love your top five, uh, your top four, less than a tenth of a second apart, less than three tenths really for the top ten. Going to Saradpun, Christy, Oxstein, Dramalev, and Luis Umano with a late charge. Gets into the top 10, the Colombian Orsolan Racing Tony Car driver. On the grid, it is Rock Master Shifter, one of the bigger Rock Master Shifter grids we've seen in a minute. I mean, even even going to Las Vegas, I think I think we're up uh, here in St. Pete. Yeah, really great to see. I'm very excited to see the old guys go out there and do some racing for us. Uh, always great to see when we go from the older gentlemen to the younger gentlemen. But uh, yeah, great to see that we're continuing to grow a little bit. We gotta continue working on the youngsters though. We definitely gotta continue working on them here. At least so far they're putting on good racing. So. Certainly. 26 mini rockers will take the green here later on this afternoon for their first heat race. Rockmaster Shifter qualifying coming up next. Stick with us folks again. The Rock Cup Florida Winter Tour stop at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida is coming up your way with more qualifying here live with a nice sunny 75 degree weather. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that helps the driver who's just starting out in the sport or the way the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program you're gonna be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to break in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, and on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. 
Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at revperformancematerials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials. So welcome back to Tropicana Field here. My name's Xander Clements, live on Car Chaser, alongside my good buddy Ron John Eversole and the Rock Shifter Masters have just been released onto the racetrack. They're getting set to go green for qualifying. While they make their way out here, we talked to a number of shifter drivers yesterday. Specifically, uh, we talked to the one driver who felt like he had race winning pace in Pompano Beach before he put it in the wall on lap number four. PSL Karting's Jake French ended P2 back at Pompano Beach. We chatted with him at the end of practice day yesterday to get his thoughts so far on the weekend and how his weekend shaping up. Jake, you felt like you had a winning car, found yourself in the barriers on lap four in Pompano. What do we got to do to avoid that this week? Uh, not hit the barriers <laughs> and pay attention more. Uh, yeah, that was pretty unfortunate. <laughs> Talk to me about this racetrack here. We've been practicing for a bit. How are your thoughts on it? Uh, it's definitely unique. Um, I remember two years ago it was pretty rough, and uh, it's definitely rough this year. Pretty physical in a shifter as we're doing quite a bit of shifting, not many times the rest. Uh, the, the biggest thing is qualifying is going to be extremely important because uh, this could be very hard to pass. So uh, the name of the game is qualifying. How's your hot lap pace so far? Hot lap pace is pretty good. Uh, PSL machine's been uh, pretty good. We're fine tuning it right now, but honestly, I think this track's more driving than this go kart. Just you know, you're getting beaten around, and it's whoever has the biggest balls to get around. So, sweet. Thanks, Jake. Yep, no problem. Again, one of the more interesting, interesting parts of that interview with Jake French, Ron John, is that he mentioned that uh, you know he thought that this is more driver than probably any of the other tracks that we're going to go to just because of how physical and raw it is especially in a shifter I mean the bumps make it so tricky just to hit your apexes every single lap and, and be on point with that and then again you're driving with how much you're having to shift up and down and up and down at this racetrack mostly with your your left hand your inside hand that just holding on the wheel next to the clutch lever so um, you know, in, in Jake's mind, I mean, yeah, you got to dial the go-kart in a little bit. Yes, you need to have a good engine to get down that front straightaway, but you can make up for both if you are really just wheeling the heck out of that thing. And, uh, again, that's going to bode well for the drivers that really feel like they've got a lot of raw natural talent here in Rock Shifter Master. But I thought that was really interesting because you hear a lot of drivers, again, say, ah, oh, I don't feel like we got the power here to run at this racetrack on a bottom end, don't have top speed. You know, we're struggling with the chassis for the setup, right. and you talk to Jake, and he's like, oh, no, I mean, really, it's get out there and drive that thing here this weekend. I think that's exactly what it's going to take, too. And uh, speaking of people who know how to drive that machine, the gentleman that's now sitting up at the top, our past uh, Florida Winter Tour champion, Jordan Musser, right now out in front, the PSL driver, put down a 35-298. But as we look down that list again, uh, quite, a, quite a good group of uh, – drivers here for our master shifters Scott Presky right now in that second spot Renee Martinelli in third Cole Mathewson in fourth Rashard Bagheri now in that fifth spot Nico Rondet in sixth it's Francesco Vassallo in seventh uh, Hugh Templeman right now will occupy that ninth position Patrick Otto Madsen in the ninth and Daniel Deboss now up in tenth and as I say that Nico Rondet up into that second position the 35 547 and again, Musser goes purple that last time by Xander, 35-101 for the PSL driver. Yeah, Jordan Musser, uh, in, in just about every Rock Shifter Master event he's been in, has been just dominant. And like you said, Ron John, we were talking off the air, you know, he was, you were looking for him yes. here in round one, and he's like, well, someone's got to pay the bills to yeah. do this stuff. <laughs> That's right. He had to work, and, you know, he had to sit on the sidelines and watch, you know, as Scott Presti and Patrick Otto Madsen and, a lot of his competitors, you know, were able to, to battle for, for a race win that he right. probably would have been in contention if not walked away from. And I oh, think certainly. It, it says, you know, volume speaks volumes here to, uh, you know, the whooping he's putting on him right now. I mean, oh, he's yeah. nearly it's half the a second clear. of that whooping. Right. <laughs> you you know, know, it's not so much that he does it one time, but he goes out there and does it time after time. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure the... The guys know that when Jordan's going to be there, he's the guy, right? He's the guy going to be the top guy. At least that's what they would somewhat assume. So, But to be able to do it consistently over and over again just goes to show you how good 
and, and smooth is that the way I feel about him. Very, very smooth driver in, in Jordan Musser. He just yeah. doesn't move in the cart, even no. his head. No, he, he, he's, he's a very smooth driver here, and he's obviously felt like he's gotten everything he can out of the go-kart. So four laps complete for Musser. He's pulled in. Right now we're watching the 524 of Nico Ronde in the Ansa Motorsports Formula K machine work his way around the back sector of the racetrack. Uh, Cole Mathewson, an Ansa karting teammate to Nico Ronde, has gone quickest. That is the 5.33, and it looks like he's going to park it on that lap as well. No, he'll just slowly uh, find himself a new place in line. He's going to let the 5.26 go on by. That is none other than Vicky Bryan in the Vicky Bryan Racing, Vicky Bryan Racing Privateer Tony Kart entry couple of, uh, honestly, probably the most privateers I think I've seen at a Florida Winter Tour in the shifter classes in quite some time. Michael Stevens, Vincenzo Saracino, throwing it back to when they were growing up as kids. They were just pitting together out of a couple 6 by 10 trailers and some pop-up tents. Them and their dads and some good buddies. So, And, uh, you know, two drivers, obviously, Vincenzo, Michael, both podium-level drivers. Right, absolutely. Looking to get that little bit extra to try and get a first Florida Winter Tour win in the pro shifter class. Um, yeah, Vincenzo had a great run in uh, Pompano. I, I believe he ended up, what, fifth? Maybe in the top five, six or so? Right, and that was coming from the back in the pre-final after right, an issue. Exactly. So very, very impressive for Vincenzo to be able to pull something like that off. Two minutes to go here in Rock Shifter Master qualifying, though, and no changes at the front. Matthewson's still on your screen trying to dig for a little bit more. He's just not really finding it as he trails Hugh Templeman in the 500 Magic Cart there across the line. That time by Matthewson, 35.4. So no improvement, two tenths off his best. And I believe he's probably gonna park it on that one. I think he tried to make a second run at it. And uh, yeah, Cole Matthewson, no. He's gonna give himself another gap, he's gonna go again. I, I, with a hand in the air, I figured not only was he slowing down, I figured he would pull into the pit lane, but. He's still uh, looking over his shoulder. I don't know if it's somebody he's looking for or. Yeah, he might be waiting to run with somebody specifically. That's what I was thinking. I'm not sure. At this point, again, he's trying to both you know, cool the tires a little bit more than anything. He's trying to find a better piece of real estate to run his hot lap in. And I got to believe that the tires you're working lap 9, lap 10 are probably beyond their peak. But obviously, Matthewson feels like he can get something more out of it. So right now, he has set himself behind uh, Nico Ronde and is going to try and charge towards his teammate, who currently sits fourth, now fifth, as uh, another Ansem Motorsports driver in the form of Daniel Debos moves to P4 and into the top five. Debos, good guy, that young man. Peruvian driver from Peru in his lovely bride, and uh, good to see him back. He had actually taken a year off last year, so uh, good to see Daniel back out here racing with us in the 504 right now, sitting in that fourth spot. Rondette will have to see if he was able to make any improvement. Doesn't look like he improved at all. Will remain in fifth, looking for Cole Mathewson to come back around the 5.33. Just waiting for him to come back by the start finish. Doesn't show him coming back by yet. Let's see. All right, we do have the checkered flag out here at the start finish. Here comes the 5.07. That's Matthew Sanford. We'll end up in the 15th spot. Right now, Jordan Musser. I believe that was the 524. So again, it's going to be Jordan Musser, the PSL driver, going to be on the pole. 35-101 for Jordan. Just put in four laps, put down the lap he needed, and took it into the pits, the 516. On the outside pole, it will be the 533. Uh, Matthewson not able to uh, better that time. He ended up with a 35-276. Uh, so the Ansel Motor Supports drivers start on the outside pole in the 533. Yeah. And again, Nicholas Bedard, Nicholas Bedard and Daniel Debos, Tanico Ronde, your top five. Rock Shifter Master qualifying complete. Rock Senior coming your way here. Picked up a few more drivers. Center of your screen there, right through the fence. You can see the black, green, and yellow of Mateus Morgato and the AM Racing Engines x pre driver. Leads the championship after a dominant, perfect weekend in Pompano Beach. Again, he will be one of many vying for the pole. Live from Tropicana Field, it's the second round of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour Senior Rock qualifying coming up next. 
Maryland, USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Senior Rock qualifying underway here. First laps coming in across the line. Ryan Vincent's Nash Motorsports EOS cart. Uh, relatively quick there in the middle of that group in the 332. He's uh, just a touch better than Alessandro DiTullio in that pack as they work their way down towards turn number six. Currently right behind one of the Ali brothers and behind him is Jack Jeffers in that Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed. You're watching the fastest group right now head on through, although Make that second fastest because Mateus Morgato goes to the top here on lap number one. Detulio leads them to turn number one again. And uh, he'll set a new benchmark, 36-141. Very, very busy racetrack here in Senior Rock, Ron John. They've Big got group of them. A total of uh, 31 here this weekend in St. Petersburg. Already starting to see some obviously familiar names jumping up to the top. As you say that, Marvin... Martin Kramer's up to the top, Kramer's the uh, PSL karting driver. Uh, got Morgato, as we talked about earlier, obviously had a tremendous run in Pompano Beach with us. Jeremy Fletcher now in third. Blake Nash, who had had an incident at earlier in practice. You know, I'm glad to see he's back out there and running. Uh, as I talk about him, of course, he slides down now in the eighth spot. It's Jack Jeffers now up in fourth. Morgato's fifth. Brian Vincent up there in sixth. Jeremy Fletcher seventh. Blake Nash eighth. Uh, that's Laurent Legault in the uh, ninth position, and Diego Ramos. Diego now up into that tenth spot. But yeah, we're just getting uh, we're just getting started here with qualifying for our seniors. Unfortunately, we had a young driver go out uh, literally on the warm-up lap, unable to get out here and qualify. Obviously, going to start from the uh, very tail end of the field. Yeah, so my mistake. Thirty-two drivers actually here in the field. Is Petulio goes back to the top. Morgato to second, Gianluca Savoglio on the Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic from Canada, third. Marion Kremers is fourth. We talked to Marion Kremers yesterday. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll see what the driver from the Netherlands and PSL Karting's newest recruit had to say about the racetrack so far. Um, it looks tough to pass here in Shifter, Marion. How's it been so far in Rock Senior? Um, it's tough out there. The track's pretty narrow. It's very bumpy, so... If you go for a move, it's it's very easy to make a mistake and overshoot the corner. So, yeah, the the slower guys they get around pretty easily. But I think once the racing starts, um, everybody will be running the same pace. So um, yeah, it'll be a little bit more interesting for sure to see uh, some overtakes. And speaking of interesting overtakes, you and Alessandro Tullio definitely had one in Pompano. Any thoughts about that, or are we giving it back this week? I mean, I think it's just honest mistake. He's just probably not as talented as I am, so um, he made a mistake broke too deep and, and went over me so um, yeah I don't think it's gonna be I'm not gonna give him any payback because I expect to be in front of him so so the track definitely rougher here than in Pompano what spots on the racetrack seem to be the trickiest the interview here folks but Marion Kremers has just slapped the wall here coming on out of turn number four and the PSL Carding Burrell our driver had just gone to the pole he is still on pole right now by two thousandths of a second and while we were having him talk about the racetrack and how sketchy it was, how the bumps are, and you heard him on the track preview, he's a little bit uneasy sometimes coming through turn number five. And I think just washed out a little bit too wide and has made some serious contact with the barriers. 
And now he is going to get bumped. And he's going to have to watch the rest of this session from the sidelines and see how well his lap holds at a 35-264. Right now it is second. Lucas Mendez, the Brazilian Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic Driver, goes to the top. Detulio to third. Morgado fourth. Cameron Weinberg is fifth. There goes Diego Ramos to the top to make it an REM 1-2. Great run there for Diego, 35-207. Right now setting him up there at the top spot. Mendez, as you mentioned, right there in second. Kremers, right now that, uh, that time he had posted is going to hang on to that third spot. Don't think that's going to stand for him. Nonetheless, still got uh, oh, some great Oh, we got another one up. here off. That's a, that's a front. That is uh, one of the other Brellard drivers. Trying to identify who we've got over there. It might, I think it might be the, uh, I'm not exactly sure who we've got taken out over here. We'll see if we can get a good close look at the number. Marion Kermer's checking on him. Fellow Burrell driver just making sure that he is okay. That was a scary impact with the wall there and, and, and a very tight, tight maneuver to get off the racetrack. Look at those Nolan Bauer in the 388. And uh, the Nolan Bauer Motorsports Burrell Art gets pulled off the racetrack. The Canadian you know, Xander, we were talking 17. earlier about the racetrack and the fact that it's pretty tight and pretty short, obviously. I, I always wonder about the, the physicality of it, right? How much does it take out of you, lap after lap after lap, especially over a very bumpy track like this, according to the drivers is. What's that take out of these kids and these drivers over time, especially some of the older guys? I mean, they're, you know, they're not young. They're not old, old, if you will, uh, and the more mature. What kind of, it they still got to be you. in good, good shape to do this. You've still got to be in very good shape. You've got to be very physically fit, fit to be running at the front of a senior rock or, or, or rock shifter field for sure. You know, and I think about that with the youngsters. You look, you look at the young drivers, and they're, they're just little guys and gals. And then they get out there and they run lap after lap in these hot suits, gloves, helmets, you know, all kinds of padding to protect themselves. And yet they're able to go out there lap after lap after lap and perform. That's what's so impressive about it. Yeah, definitely here. 35 seconds to go. Mateus Morgado with a heater a few laps ago. 34-9-4-9. The championship point leader able to put one up on his... Uh, Home, home country, right. his fellow countryman, uh, Diego Ramos, shown with an American flag on the timing boards. He's actually Brazilian. It is Brazil 1-2-4. The uh, Miami, Florida native, Alessandro de Tullio, right now the highest running American in third. On your screen is, uh, I believe, Adam Ali and Santiago Fernandez heading through the back hairpin sector, coming to see the checkered flag here. Checkers coming for most of the field. Morgado has pulled in. Ramos does not improve for the pole. Detulio, checkered flag. Mendez is in. Fernandez into fifth here. Nice running qualifying for the Alessandro's Racing Tony Car driver, Santiago Fernandez, a career best. Marion Kremers with the crash right now finds himself with about six lap fresher tires and uh, a P6 result. Jeremy Fletcher's go Gary Willis Racing. Uh, Tony Card is seventh. Blake Nash is eighth. Adam Ali is ninth. Cameron Weinberg in the Speed Concepts Racing CRG is tenth. But uh, man, that was a wild qualifying session. It we, certainly was. Our cameras caught it right after, and as soon as we did, we switched it over to you guys. As Martin Kramers was trying to go even a little bit quicker and just went too far, just over the edge. So some cleanup to do here in St. Petersburg. We'll be coming back here shortly with more qualifying here. Next up onto the racetrack should be our uh, master rock class as they get set to go green. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere, uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just in knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com and one of our great people will reach out to you and, and we'll try to put the best program together. Well, Master Rock qualifying coming our way here and as uh, Mateus Morgado tops the boards over Diego Ramos, we actually caught up with both drivers in uh, the AM Racing Engines motorhome yesterday and uh, to much of Diego's dismay for his lack of English skills and he uh, his fear of being featured on camera and showcasing those and to much of the grin of Mateus Morgado and putting his buddy on the spot. <laughs> we went and chatted with both of them here. Let's see what uh, two of the top two drivers in Senior Rock had to say about the racing this weekend. All right, here Mateus, Diego, won two in last week's championship, up front in this championship. One day of practice, how are we feeling? Feeling really good. Uh... Not liking the track too much, prefer the track of Pompano, but I think we are fast and can achieve good results again. Yeah, the track looks really, really rough, dude. I mean, you guys are bouncing through the corners, there's even a little bit of elevation. I mean, where is it really worse? Where are you struggling? For me, the first corner is really hard. It's because you change the asphalt, so you go from an asphalt that have grip and then you get in the asphalt that don't have grip. Um, also, the entry of the back corner down there, you have some bumps. Is really hard, but we see through the week how it goes. And uh, we talked at Pompano, you know, I feel like especially with the rock stuff, Ariel, AM engines, they have some really good power. You got good power again this week? I think this week we are better. Uh, I hope, I hope. Let's see how it goes. Well, let's talk to here, fastest guy in practice, Diego. Yeah. Any words? Yeah, the last practice was good. I, I did first and I'm very happy. I I won this round win the, the Morgado and, and did great for my chin. Do great for my chin. Yeah, let's see. Uh, two races in a row, you can put it over on him, right? You're going to let him uh, walk away with this one again? No, for sure. This one I need to try harder because still missed two rounds for the championship. So <laughs> let's see let's see what, what I can achieve this week. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Thank you. So the Masters Rock drivers on the racetrack here. We have... Uh, Danny Robertson setting the initial pace in the 604. On screen though, Scott Roberts, who was a contender in Pompano Beach and had a very hot end to 2021. Problems for one driver here getting lifted over the barrier. And I believe that is Kim Carapalotti. Or no, Scott Carapalotti in the 60. No, yes, Kim Carapalotti, the driver getting lifted off the racetrack here. Brother Scott able to keep going. So the here, Pilati brothers, only uh, one for two right now on the racetrack and, and making it to the green flag and qualifying. Not a great batting average here to start the day. Not at all. You know, on the first opening lap, not to be able to come back around and take the green flag, yeah, that's, that's not a good way to start your qualifying. Robertson, though, uh, put up a good lap there with a 36-298. We'll have to see how that hangs on. Federico Montoya. The Alessandro's racing driver now up into that second position, the 626. Renato Yader David, who put an absolute incredible move on William Isaias in the last lap in Pompano Beach. One of the most beautiful slide jobs I've ever seen in karting, put on by an incredible driver to begin with. And Renato David. Talked with him certainly when I saw him when he first arrived at the racetrack, and he just gave me the big smile. He had watched it over and over again himself. Thought it was pretty impressive. Yeah, that's uh, that, that, that move was one for the ages right there. And, no doubt. Uh, big credit here to the Masters Rock driver in the Orsolan Racing Camp. He's just ahead of Rob Mayer right now. If I'm not mistaken, though, he's behind, ahead of Danny Robertson in 604. So Robertson towing off of uh, David, able to go a little quicker. 
Danilo Romalo is the fastest. Robertson second quickest in the RPG Cosmic as he is just kind of following around uh, uh, Renato David. So David drops to sixth. And even the Masters field kind of tightening up, getting yes, some has. more players at the front. Federico right. Montoya with a good lap that time. Romalo uh, pulled the gap over the field by about a tenth and a half, but it's very, very close. Only one tenth of a second from P2 to P6 from Montoya, Robertson, Scotty Roberts, William Isaias, and Renato David all packed closely here. And Isaias, the runner up from round one, like you mentioned, yep. uh, was very quick. He's quick enough here to go to the pole, 35-9-2-3. Yeah, he had, he had basically uh, thought he had won the race down there in Pompano until that uh, that move by Renato Yader David, who right now sits in that second position right there behind William Isaias. As just now about four or five laps in for the guys out on the track, our master drivers. Scott Roberts now up in that fourth spot. Federico Montoya, obviously a name you'll recognize, the Montoya name. Uh, drops back down into sixth. Romalo right now in third, but again, it's William Isaias, Renato Yader David in second, Romalo third, Roberts in fourth. Roberts, Scott Roberts in that fifth spot. And again, just a few laps in as they're qualifying underway here for our Master Rock. 2022 the Florida Winter Tour going on here in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. What a gorgeous day today. Gorgeous day here, and uh, I can tell you one driver who is loving this weather, and that is your championship point leader, Mateus Morgato. He's down right now with our Kendall Hedge. Mateus, you're, you're the, the only, only driver to break the 34 second <laughs> bracket for qualifying. How does it feel? Like, how are you going to keep up the momentum for the rest of the weekend? I'm really happy uh, to be starting the week on pole. It's just the beginning of the week, but now we got to work to end the week with uh, winning again. How's the track handling right now? It's really hard because a bit bumpy, but every session that we go in gets better, better, better. I hope later it's even better, but really hard track to drive, and yeah. Are you planning to make a lot of changes heading into the first heat? For sure, we gotta keep working. We can never stop. Um, so I'm not sure we, what we will change now but for sure we will be changing things. All right. Well, congratulations on pole and good luck in your first heat. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you for that there, Kendall, here. We go back on the racetrack as Master Rock qualifying has two and a quarter minutes to go. William Isaias' lap that he threw down is still holding. Uh, 35 at 906 for the 627. Yellow flags down for turn number one. Let's get focused on in here. That is the full tilt racing 669 of John Stanescu in the Checkered Motorsports OTK entry. He has spun here in the, in, uh, in the center of turn number one, has gotten the car refired. He'll rejoin the field there uh, in what seems to be a decent gap on the racetrack, and the yellows will drop around John. But even with the rubber getting down, I mean, this track is still very slick off the, the single standard racing line. Um, and uh, we're seeing the, 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 the pavement still getting ripped up a little bit. Chunks of asphalt were littered across the infield of the racetrack last night when we were doing our track walk and it's just it happens every parking lot we go to rip up the surface a little bit come Certainly. in patch it up rip it up more patch it up right finally the rubber comes down and it just it starts to drive somewhat like a racetrack but it's it's so tricky to get around here as uh, we see a few pull in Renato David is in a few more into the pit lane Isaias I believe is in um, Danny Robertson's in so your top three top four all pulled in here with eight laps complete, kind of locking themselves into the order. Uh, interesting comment about the fact that, uh, you know, time after time come back out, get a little more rubber down, the track starts to feel a little bit better in his hands. So that's an improvement, and that's what it takes normally on these uh, temporary tracks anyway. Get out there and get that rubber down and then continue to work on your lines. And, yeah, of course, every once in a while you do end up with some... <laughs> Some chunks here and here, here and there, and uh, the guys do a great job of making sure they go out there and try and do the best absolute repair they can make to the track. But uh, it's all part of the game. It's all part of the race. Every one of them has to deal with it, and uh, it's those who deal with it the best that end up at the top. Yeah, I mean, every bit, you know, it factors in. I mean, it, it just it all 
It's the same for everybody. You know, I think right. that was the biggest point that Marion was saying uh, in his interview earlier on is that, you know, it's, it's the same surface everyone's got to run on, the same right. level of grip everyone's got to do it. So you can complain if you want to. You can mention that it is a rough track, and it is. It's yep. definitely it's a parking lot. It's a temporary circuit with non-racing asphalt that's had more than a couple months on it. It's not the oldest. It's, it's still dark pavement, but it is, it is rough. Uh, it as you can see drivers rough. bouncing here through two and three. And, um, but, it, again, Everyone's got a race on it. Everyone's got to find a way around it. The guys who will uh, find their way the quickest will, of course, be the first to the checkered flag later on today. A little more cleanup here to go as, of course, we had uh, an issue for Kim Carapalotti at the beginning of this session. Beyond that, we're going to continue to roll through qualifying. Master Rock has wrapped up, and I believe our next session out is none other than the Junior Rock, or no, the Mini Rockers, my mistake there, the Mini Rockers. Getting set to go Mini and Micro Rock on the lineup. Looks like uh, Micro Rock here with Mini Rock complete. Micro Rock next, then Junior Rock, then VLR Master, then our Shifter Rock drivers. Plenty of qualifying to come and then a whole host of heat races here this afternoon. Stick with us, folks. It's the second round of the Rock Cup Florida Winter Tour live from St. Petersburg. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Well, here we go. Seven and a half minutes as the clock ticks down. Micro Rock qualifying underway down to turn number one. First driver on the racetrack is the number 16 of Jose Carlos uh, Jose Carlos Murad in the Super Tune USA Tony Kart. The Mexican driver heads to turn number six. Just at a Royce Vegas number 33 Benick. Then it's Maxwell Macha in the number three SLA Kart Racing Kart Republic. Of course, Macha crossed the line first at the uh, right. round one main event, got a penalty for a jump start, which was a, a true jump start. He did end up nose it ahead. Troy Ferguson coming to the green flag, who had dominated all week long, uh, and ultimately it handed the win to Tyrone Kemper Jr., a uh, New Orleans native. Yes, very, very exciting. You know, his dad was so excited leading into the weekend to begin with when we were down there in Pompano talking about, you know, we're down here to take the hardware and for it to end up that he ended up on the uh, the top step was uh, uh, well just a great a great drive for uh, Tyrone Jr. You know he's only been around a couple of years, so he's just really getting into this. So great to see him take a, a big time victory in a national event. So uh, congratulations to Tyrone Kemper Jr. We'll have to wait and see how he does out here in qualifying. Right now though, it's Santiago Nanem and uh, the International Motorsports driver with a 40.268. Don't think that's going to be a number to hang on to the top spot. And as I say that, David Zhao goes right back around with a 40.238. Three thousandths quicker. <laughs> so it looks like this is going to be a big group of uh, real tight racing. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be a tight group here, and I think it'll tighten up a lot more as the, the, the session goes on. 25 drivers in Micro Rock. Obviously, okay. that bodes great for the future of the, the rest of the classes here to have a strong micro division. And uh, David Zhao, as you mentioned, the Canadian, currently uh, topping the boards over Santiago Namnum. You know, it's the lifeblood of the sport. We've, we've got to continue to recruit our, uh, our micro drivers, get them out here, expose more of this to uh, 
the younger kids and show them what the opportunities are. Um, because if we, if we don't, <laughs> not going to be a whole lot to talk about, that's for sure. Got to continue to just bring a lot more folks out here to the races. Let me tell you something here. Santiago Namnum, he doesn't have the easiest last name to pronounce, and the kid knows it already in micro at like seven, eight years old. He likes going up to, to other parents and other adults and asking them to, if they know his name and then, and then <laughs> laughing at them in their face when they, when they muck it up. <laughs> he, he is a full-on troublemaker, that kid. Is he really? Oh, Got an attitude. Time. I love it. He's Good for time. him. Uh, right as long now, as in a, in a fun way, I mean, you yeah. know, letting no, be. all, all yeah. in good jest. Yeah, no, he, but he's, he's he, I can tell he's going to cause, uh, he, he's going to be pulling a lot of red cards in his <laughs> classes and his parents. <laughs> you know, he's, he's just a class clown, man. He's yeah. a kid that gets himself into trouble, try, you know, trying to, and honestly being way too funny. Um, but uh, a good kid there. He is second uh, sandwich between uh, the uh, – Canadian of David Zhao in the 27. And now, moving out of the sandwich and moving up, the Mexican Jose Carlos Murad. Then Zhao answers back again. So lots of trading the top spot here in Micro Rock with David Zhao remaining on top once again. Quickly answers the challenge by Jose Carlos Murad and moves ahead of Santiago Namnum. Still about three and a half minutes left here to go in qualifying for our Micros. As you mentioned there, the Goodwoods Cartways uh, driver of David Zhao again put himself back up there on the pole with a 40.146. That's the number right now to beat. David Zhao, Juan Carlos Murad, the Mexican driver, part of Super Tune, hanging on to that second spot. Nanum, if you, uh, Namnum, if you had missed him, Santiago now is going to drop down into the fourth spot as Matias Romalo is now up into the second spot. The number seven driver, the Brazilian. Good run there for Mateus uh, with a 40.207 to that 40.146. Alexander Perpina on the move all the way up into the fifth position for Alexander now in the number 66. And Drew Wall, somebody hadn't talked a whole lot about here in qualifying. Drew Wall is now up into the fifth spot, the Motorsports RDX driver. Drew in the number 19. Put down a 40.275 right now. Has him slotted in the fifth position. Still two and a half minutes left to go here in qualifying for our micros. Yeah, two and a half minutes to go here. Mateus Romalo uh, trying to uh, match the pace initially of his father and Danilo in the Master Rock class and doing pretty good. Again, currently provisionally on the front row by eight thousandths of a second over Jose Carlos Murad. Um, uh, a tight micro group here, a tenth uh, and a half, nearly two tenths back to eighth, uh, or back to seventh with Rocco Simone in the Parallel USA number 95. He'll move his entry up into fifth. Murad not able to go any quicker that time. Neither does David Zhao, neither does Mateus Romalo. Santiago Namnum does not improve. Jackson Morley does. Closes the gap to the leaders. Tenth and a half here for the top seven, going back to Alexander Procunia. But uh, a minute 45 left, and we're just trying to get a little bit of everybody here because there are so many drivers that could jump to the top of the boards here. Right now on your screen is Jose Carlos Murad heading through the final corner. So he's caught up to some traffic. One of the uh, U-Race comp carts headed into turn number one. We'll make the pass easily. That's on Alexander Rotushny, who is currently in 19th. I was uh, kind of surprised to see Alexander kind of sitting back down there a little bit further down the order as well as Tyrone Kemper Jr. Not quite got the speed just yet. Right sits in that 18th spot. David Zhao, though, once again went purple the last time by 40.095. So David Zhao continues to be your pole sitter as we're down up to about 45 seconds left here in qualifying for our micros. And Zhao improved a little bit last time by, dropped down to the 40.0 bracket, puts a quarter tenth of back on Mateus Romalo, which is still well within striking distance if Romalo can put another burner together here on the final time around if he's not in too much traffic. So we're going to follow as many as we can here through turn number six and pick him up 
over in the final sector of the racetrack. There's Gratushny. Believe that is Romalo. So we're watching Mateus Romalo head through the final corners of the racetrack. Does he have enough here to knock off David Zit? No, that's Zhao actually, the Goodwood Cartways driver in the 27. Zhao goes purple again, 40.023. He opens the gap up. Romalo does not beat it. Rocco Simone hit his personal best last time. Could he be hitting a stride in the parallel cart? The 95 yet to cross the line about halfway through his final lap. Jose Carlos Murats, Jackson Morley, Santiago Namnum. Namnum and Morley are done. Drew Waltz crosses seventh. He can do no better. Procuna eighth. Rafael Canas is ninth. In the Super Tune Tony Kart and final time across the stripe. You want to talk about a buzzer beater, one of the final five go-karts. Rocco Simone goes to the pole in the 95 for Peril and USA in the Canadian. Makes it an all red and white front row between himself and Goodwood Cartway Zone. David Zhao. Nice performance by Rocco Mangus Simone run. there. Last second uh, to get that lap in under the gun, Ron John. 12 thousandths. Wow. Great Very run there close. for Rocco. Uh, again, a young man that we've watched over the years uh, gain his, uh, I guess his, uh, I guess you say notches in his belt, if you will, uh, over the couple of years of working really hard and finally uh, starting to see some results here as he's going to be your pole sitter in the qualifying for our, our micro. Going to be Rocco Simone, the Canadian driver, along with another Canadian, David Zhao, on the outside of the pole. Great run for Rocco. Great, great lap there, last lap. 12 thousandths of a second. Damn. Yeah, fantastic run there by him. And uh, we'll take this opportunity as the track clears out here, take another commercial break. When we come back, Junior Rock headed onto the racetrack here. Three more classes to come for qualifying. Junior Rock up next. Then we go to Master VLR 100cc. And then Shifter Rock will close us out here before we get into our first round of heat races this afternoon. Stick with us, folks. Car Chasers coverage of the Florida Winter Tour rolls on. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top ranked national level team to back it up, We'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novus Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. Welcome back here, Junior Rock qualifying. Just taking the green flag and uh, big Junior Rock class as well. This is a Senior Rock so pushing 30 or 32. So nice turnout here for Junior Rock. Much bigger than where we were in Pompano Beach, which already had a, a fantastic finish. Jorge Ortiz getting away with that uh, amazing final lap battle over Sebastian Weldon and Aiden Ingrata. We've got a few more names to throw their... Uh, names into the hat here but I'm sure we'll see a lot of our uh, standard contenders up at the front Ortiz is back Michael Costello is there Sebastian Weldon will be in the mix here Aiden Ingrata of course will be uh, up in contention as well or at least he we'll should be immediately talk about Aiden he jumps right up to the top of the chart just on his out lap already went purple Ortiz Miller Weldon Cameron Vidara Costello Musella Campbell and Ardila's already your top 10. Just getting started here though, qualifying for our juniors. What a big group of juniors you have again. 
Yeah, again, massive group, 32 drivers strong. Same size we've got over in Senior Rock as well. So, again, I mean, just about every single speed class here pretty filled up for the second round of the Florida Winter Tour. There's Christian Cameron coming across the line. Very impressive performance here by Christian Cameron on lap number two. The same for Teddy Musella, who was starting to kind of find his groove a little bit last weekend. You know, he, uh, we were talking with Rob Howden, of course, on the live stream, and he said yes. he had chatted with, uh, you know, Mike Rawls and said, look, man, that Teddy Musella kid, that kid's a sleeper. You know, he, he could be a real talent. I think we've got something with him uh, here at RPG, and then, you know, he's, he's going to be with us for the whole year, so we'd like you to keep a close eye on him and, and watch him very quickly become a, a podium and race win contender here. We've got a driver in the wall, though, coming out of turn number six. Drifted a little bit too wide. Looks to be the 264 of Carlos Sasso in the PSL karting Burrell Art. Which, again, just unfortunate for Carlo as... Uh, the field now will pass him on by, and the officials will move that card off to the side. Meanwhile, Stephen Miller leading a group down the front straightaway. Miller drops to fifth by giving him toe. He drops even further now, down to sixth. Ortiz up to second. Everybody's still trying to chase, though. Aiden Ingrata looking to sweep the poles here in junior in St. Petersburg. Again, that that would be very impressive, Ron John, especially with how stacked these fields are. You look back at the the Junior Rock and the, even the VL, obviously the VLR Junior last year, but even the Junior Rock, we seem to be a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller than where we were, uh, you know, than where we are now. Uh, looking back to where we were at Pompano Beach last year, and uh, you know, on through the the rest of the championship. So to have, you know, this level of competition here in Tampa Bay is is awesome. Yes. And uh, it makes it that much more impressive for guys to be able to run up at the front in this kind of field and, and get the results. It adds all that weight to the trophy that uh, you want to lift so badly. Halfway in almost. Just coming up to three and a half minutes in, three and a half to go. Aiden Ingrata, a tenth and a quarter over Christian Cameron. Then it's Steven Miller. He'll bring it down to less than a tenth. Ingrata opens it back up to two tenths. Teddy Musella to second. Yao Vegara to third, Sebastian Weldon fourth, Miller fifth, and Grata is two and a half tenths up on this field. Insane. <laughs> Professor going to work right there. Uh, 35, 6, 77, the best time so far there for Aiden and Grata. Again, Teddy Musella jumps up into that second spot with a 35, 9, 0. Four, like you said, a couple of tenths back behind Charlie Smith now on the move. I say that, there goes Michael Costello up into the second spot. Michael with a 35.752. Gun run there for the uh, Nash Motorsports driver, excuse me, the Bennett driver of Costello. And then Charlie Smith right now, that's the Nash Motorsports I was talking about. Charlie in the 201 right now sits in that third spot. Masella fourth, and uh, Yao Vigera in that fifth. Sebastian Weldon right now hanging on to six. Stephen Miller, Christian Cameron, Jorge Ortiz, Caleb Campbell. That'll wrap up your top ten. Yeah, that'll that'll wrap it up here. On on screen, Michael Costello. That time by does not improve, but he is at least up to second. So he's closing the gap to Aiden Ingrata as the field. You can see just again how rough it is through turn number two. I mean, the front of the car just bucking, and we got problems in turn number one. Two drivers have gone around here going into the corner. One is the 211. That is Anthony Martella in this Charles Leclerc professional racing Ontario team entry. And the other one, the 212 of Amelia Chandler in the prime power team Charles Leclerc card. So a couple of chassis teammates, and they're going to bring Martella out of the go-kart and pull that go-kart off to the side of the racetrack there. Good catch by the Rock Cup USA team as Stephen Miller leads his group down the backstretch to turn six with the 219 right on his tail of Christian Cameron. A minute and a half to go here, Ron John. That was unexpected, definitely. That certainly there. was. That and he was incident. in a very, very vulnerable spot where he was as well. But what a tremendous run for Bobby, our starter to run down there and try and get the 
you know, the driver out of the cart and get the cart up and out of the way. He's running from over here doing our flags and running down there pulling carts over the, the barrier. Great run there for Bobby. Hope yeah. we got that on video. Oh, yeah. yeah. Trust me, it, <laughs> it, it, it looks like it's not that long of a run here from the finish line down to turn number one. But it's, it's a good little, uh, little sprint you've got to put on there. So credit to Bobby uh, Radovoy and all the other t track marshals that Rock Cup USA has brought in here this weekend to keep the drivers safe. They have been on it since they really uh, have been. finding a full-time a traveling crew in for uh, Las Vegas in 2021. And, you know, I talked with Garrett Potter. He's like, you know what? It really doesn't cost that much more to do it right, you know, to, to get good corner marshals that we can bring to every single event. And that's what they've been doing. Yeah. These no guys. more temp agencies, no more lucky, you know, local guys. Certainly. They get the same team top to bottom each week for a minimum of four national races and maybe some rock fest. Right. And I think right. that's. That is showing in the, the numbers and, you know, the increase in, in everything else here that we're seeing. So important. I've, I've always felt that uh, having guys with experience makes it just a whole lot better experience for everyone, not just the drivers, but everyone. And then to see these young guys, uh, most of them work at uh, Miller Motorsports Park up in Utah. And... Uh, Obviously, Garrett knew a lot of those guys and uh, was able to put this crew together. They came out and they performed and showed they know what to do and how to do it. And uh, so it's been, a, it's been an awesome thing for us, a great addition to our team. Great to have the young guys. No doubt here. Let's uh, talk about the young guys on the racetrack. Aiden Ingrata does snag a pole award provisionally. 35-47, uh, the lap before last, opens the gap to a tenth and a half. Vegara second. Costello to third, Miller to fourth, Cameron fifth, Charlie Smith and sixth. Ortiz, Weldon, Teddy Musella. Musella drops to tenth as, uh, or moves up to tenth back as Diego Ardiles tries to pass him by, ultimately ends up 11th. So Junior Rock qualifying is completed. We've got a VLR Master coming up here, so uh, two more classes to qualify as we've got a whole lot of track cleanup here to do after that one. Sure do. Maryland USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere. Uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through 
uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together. Maryland U.S. level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full service driver development program with year round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. All right, welcome back to Florida Winter Tour here for 2022 in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm Ron John Ebersol here with Rock Cup USA here at Tropicana Field here of the Tampa Rays, the baseball team. Florida Winter Tour is the 24th year here for the Florida Winter Tour. And again, just the second leg of the Florida Winter Tour here in St. Pete. Our last event will be next month, the month of March in Orlando. Looking forward to that. All right, right now getting ready to start our qualifying group for the VLR Masters. Just now getting underway. They've taken the green flag for the first time. They'll come around again qualifying here for our VLR Masters. Boy, so far it's been a, a good couple of days. We've been real fortunate. No, uh, no rain. Nothing but sunshine. A little fog when we got up this morning. Wasn't sure if that meant that maybe we were going to have a, a kind of a cloudy day, but actually it's a, a little couple of clouds here and there, but nonetheless an absolutely beautiful day here in St. Petersburg. Welcome. Certainly hope you enjoy your time here checking out cart, ra uh, cart Chaser, that is, and all of our cart racers as we continue to qualify here. Again, and it's just a group of eight drivers out there. Right now, Christian Vomir is sitting on top. A techno Kart driver, 37.939. As I say that, there goes Lauren to Mardan right around the corner. At uh, 37.535, so Mardan right now is out there in front. Caden Goodridge, uh, Christian Vomir now in that third spot. Valenzano right now, Andrew in the fourth. Mark Pavin in fifth. Gallo Barros, Alex Dalbon, and uh, Bruno Giovanni. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Good one there. Very, very nice. Yeah. So not a huge group here for our VLR Masters, but nonetheless, uh, a good group of drivers here. This is, these guys, uh, the techno kart drivers, usually pretty strong here, both Lauren Tu and uh, Christian Vomir. And as we say that, it's already, uh, Lauren Tu already showing, he's up there at the top. Yep, a quarter tenth up on the field right now here as our cameras pick him up and pick up the field coming out of turns three and four. We've got, of course, Rock Shifter currently on deck. We already talked, well, I showed you guys our interview with Jake French. We talked to a couple of other shifter drivers about the dynamics of this racetrack here. One in particular was uh, David Greco with PSL Karting. And uh, uh, David we talked to, uh, who was working a little bit hard on his machine. He had a close run in Pompano, P3 overall. Um, just needs to find a little more pace here to find a way to get into victory lane. David, you had a podium pace and turned it into a podium in Pompano even after some wild stuff in the heats. What do you think you need to be a little bit more here in St. Pete? Honestly, right now I'm pretty happy with our pace in practice. 
Uh, we just got to find just that, you know, that one tenth, especially here since the track's so short, it's pretty difficult to find. But everybody's relatively close. We're going to make some just small adjustments on the cart, nothing too big. And then hopefully tomorrow we could just set that nice lap in quality because it is difficult to pass on this track. And what are your thoughts on this place, man? You guys are running sub 35 second lap times. Not the biggest fan of short tracks, but I do really like the layout. It's really fun to drive. And I think with all the bumps, it kind of makes it interesting for everybody. But yeah, other than that, I think it's a, it's a really cool place. Just wish there was a little bit more opportunity to pass. Thanks, David. Thanks, Xander. Welcome back here. You haven't missed too much so far in VLR Master qualifying. Laurentiu Mardin is still near the top of the order, but behind him, we've got a new driver at the overall top. Caden Goodridge in the Intrepid for Goodwood Cartways is now the fastest driver. Mardin bumped down to second. And our right, editor just catching one of the one of the barriers as he comes whizzing by us. It yeah, sounds like a bomb going off, but everything's good. Able to continue on there. Yeah, these barriers not filled with anything here. Light, light uh, barriers that they use with these tech pros. They have uh, uh, tie straps in between that kind of link them all together rather than some of the barriers that will have a plastic rod connecting them. Right. So you can see that um, they move probably the easiest out of, I would say, any of the barrier companies. Uh, and, and really, if they, if they break, then you run into the tie strap, which typically won't break uh, right. when it holds you. So they're, they're really good for these temporary races here where – you know, you abs accidentally touch them, um, and they're not really going to break your go-kart. Now, when you run into them the way Marion Kermers did and then his <laughs> teammate Nolan Bauer did, right. that will definitely break the go-kart and uh, cause some damage. But just uh, tank slapping the wall doesn't do too much here. And uh, Laurentiu Mardin navigating them well because while we mentioned when we came back here from the interview that he had fallen down the order, he's picked it back up. 37-165 last time, this time by... Well, he's not going to go quicker, but he's still got a tenth of a second to the good over Caden Goodridge. And I know we talked about it earlier about just the physicality. Getting out here on a temporary circuit like this is extremely rough. These are our master drivers, 32 plus. You know it uh, takes a lot to get out there. It's, uh, I don't know, 70 plus degrees right now in their race suits. Takes a lot. Takes a lot out of them physically and get out there and come finish up and then of course they'll have a nice pre uh, pre final uh, tomorrow and a couple of races then the finals on Sunday so I, I'm sure they're going to be perfectly fine but Mardan still out there in front Goodrich in second Vomir third Pavin hangs on to fourth that's Mark Pavin in the 754 Andrew Valenzano is in, looks like he's already gone in, the 703. Yep, and there goes Vomir on in. So a couple more coming in here, minute and a half to go in qualifying. And uh, again, like you said, not much changing right there. Mardan tops over Goodridge, Vomir in third, Mark Pavin in fourth, Andrew Valenzano is fifth, Alex Dalbon sixth, Bruno Sorgiovanni is seventh, and Gila Barros is Eight. They are tied on lap times. You see that, Rod John? 38, yeah. 4, 6, 7 for both P7 and P8 on the racetrack. Which one's going to take which, right? Yeah, in any case here, one Looks minute like to go. Looks like it's going to be Bruno. Yeah, Bruno right now must have the tiebreaker between the pairs. So the 773 gets the inside of the final row of the racetrack. Yep. As, uh, again, just about everyone's pulled in. Mardan. Laurentiu Mardan has parked it in the scale line. So the 782 Techno Kart driver off the racetrack as well. And uh, we're just trying to find drivers to focus on now here as there's only a couple still making laps here. But all of your top contenders, I believe, are in. Caden Goodridge is uh, trying to find if he's still on the racetrack right now. Let's see. I don't believe he is. Oh, there he is right there. Yep. There's your intrepid driver, currently second. One-tenth off. Was only a tenth off his own best last time, so two-tenths off the pole. Let's see what he's got this time by. Final time for Caden Goodridge because there's going to be ten seconds to go. So final time across the stripe for Caden Goodridge. Checkered flag coming next time to the next driver. It is not enough. Mark Pavon does not improve on his final time either. 
The 721 of Alex Dalbon does not go any faster. So uh, one more driver left to uh, wrap it, and he is headed over towards the back hairpin. Will work his way into the final two corners. Come across the line at checkered flag in the air for VLR Master. And we'll take our final commercial break during this qualifying section of round number two of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. No changes overall. Lorenzo Mardan, Caden Goodridge, Christian Vomir, Mark Pavon, Andrew Valenzano, your top five. When we come back, Pro Rock Shifter coming your way here live from St. Petersburg. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. So, welcome back here. Final class on track for qualifying. Shifter Rock. Uh, on the circuit here in St. Petersburg, about 25 drivers strong for the second race in a row. David Greco, the first driver out of the pit lane over Danny Formel, Jake French. Talon Yaka was next out. Colin Daly, and the DRT racing driver from Jamaica, goes to second as Joshua Conker. And the Checkered Motorsports Magic tops the initial lap here in qualifying. You've got your championship point leader in round one winner, Danny Formel, currently on your screen, the 437, just ahead of Jake French, who uh, he is showing around the racetrack. Then it was Talon Yockel and Daly right there. And you can see Daly was all over the rear bumper of uh, Yockel. He'll probably try and go by here down in turn number one because it's just so tricky for these guys to, again, get around each other. And it's something we're going to be talking about all weekend long for the shifting drivers especially. They take an already narrow line going into the corner. Um, and when you have these double apex sections like coming out of turn three and four right there and then uh, coming through six and seven when he goes over to eight, uh, again, just this long, narrow entry, deep on the brakes already naturally going into the corner. It just becomes so difficult for them to try and go even deeper to pass someone and get alongside them before the, the entry to the turn. Now, four mile last time, 434.52. This time, 34.3. French at a 34.51. Tenth and a half back. David Greco, third, a 5.49, right behind his BSL karting teammate. Then Josh Conker, two tenths back. Vincenzo Saracino pulls up to seven thousandths within Danny Formal. And again, we talked about it, Ron John. We've been pushing him a lot, and he deserves it. Uh, the driver that is uh, putting forth a full-on privateer effort here. Been this working hard. Tour. Just yes, him and his dad. Yep pulling up to the racetrack, going up against factory race teams, factory operations like the one backing Jake French in the 406. And uh, right now he's right there with them, Saracino, just uh, a tenth off of French and uh, three more hundreds from Jake French to Danny Formel. Didn't take Danny long to get up there and show his speed, 34-232. Talk with both uh, Jake as well. He said it was a little rough out there. He said... I've heard that from everyone, but you know, it's, it's all part of the game. So again, still Danny Formal hanging on there out in front, the leading edge motorsports driver. Jake French second, Saracino in third, Greco fourth, Colin Daly. The Jamaican driver, as I say, that A.J. Myers bumps up into the fourth spot, pushing Colin down into sixth. Josh Conker right now hanging on to seventh. Uh, Gianno Torino, name we hadn't talked a whole lot about. Now Gianno up in eighth. Uh, Baylor Griffin ninth. And Taylor Yackel 
Thalen right now in that 10th position. Let's see, Jake French looked like he, all, he was on a burner that time by. Was not quick enough. I thought he was gaining a little bit on formal. He's not. Still uh, both drivers a little bit off the pace here. We've got problems for Mike Rivera. The kid, uh, the old guy feeling young going after the kids here is A.J. Myers goes to the top. Hello, Mr. Magic Kart and reigning, defending Florida Winter Tour champion A.J. Myers with a 34.199 was pretty silent to start this session. And a uh, fellow Magic Car driver there going by, Vincenzo Saracino as Myers falls into line over to turn number six there. Saracino headed into the back. Then, uh, I believe it should be Formal and then Myers. Myers, three hundredths up on Formal, three more hundredths to French. They said it was gonna be tight, it'll be tricky to pass. That's how crucial this qualifying session is. Right now, it is in the hands of the reigning Florida Winter Tour champion, A.J. Myers, Ron John. Looking down the list there and continue to see some folks on the move. Josh Conker continues to hang tough now in that seventh spot. Uh, Jason Enrique up to the 13th, the 407 on the move. David Greco still hanging on to the fifth spot, the 415. But A.J. Myers, the Florida Winter Tour Champion for 2021, showing some speed here, 34-199. To Danny Formal's 34-232. French still hanging on to third. Saracino again put in another good time, hanging on to that four spot. Does look like a several of the drivers are starting to go ahead and pull off. Looks like uh, Fermal is in, Jake French is in. Thalen Yackel down there in 12th will hang on to the 12th position. We'll just have to wait and see how things shake out as they continue to circle around the track here and qualifying. Again. Last group out before we hit uh, heat race number one here for the Florida Winter Tour. And again here, a tenth of a second right now from the big three backwards. A.J. Myers is in. Uh, I believe uh, David Greco should be pulling in this time. All these guys not needing the entire session to lay down a heater. They're going to pull in and save the tires here. Most of your field coming into the scales here this time. We'll see if anyone opts to stay on the racetrack. I think everybody is coming in right now. Here is uh, Blake Hunt letting uh, the GFC Rivera Racing entry go by. Do have a couple of guys continuing on. We've I did see quite a few of them though did pull into the pit uh, lane. We are down to about three drivers on the is racetrack that it? right three? now. Yeah, we are we are that tight here. First up, uh, it is uh, one of the magic carts. That is Lucas Catania. He is 22nd. Nothing okay. left to lose for right. Lucas. Across the line, not able to go any bit faster that time by. Next up across, Jason Enrique in the Rivera Racing GFC, 13th. No improvement as well. There's Levi Wosick in the factory cart. Final three drivers, and uh, I believe that's going to do it for just about all of them. Catania is going to be the last one to turn some laps here in this qualifying session. So while he's doing that, we'll chat with an update and a live uh, interview with A.J. Myers here shortly. We also caught up with uh, Mr. Magic Cart USA and Mr. Three-Time defending Florida Winter Tour champion A.J. Myers yesterday. Let's see what he had to say here about his weekend so far. How much do you feel like driver versus chassis versus motor than normal? I feel like with any parking lot, the chassis makes a difference. And that's really where I struggled the last round. I couldn't get the chassis to do I want. It was always floating. I couldn't get the dig. I made some changes today, and I, I feel like I can do whatever I want with the go-kart. How has this track changed here with one day of putting rubber down on it? I mean, we picked up probably a second and a half, two seconds from beginning to end. It feels like it's taking pretty good rubber in certain spots. I think it's only going to get more. Awesome. Thanks and good luck, AJ. Thank you. Well, that'll wrap up qualifying here. Checkered flag officially flying. Lucas Catania was not able to improve anywhere from P21. So we'll give you the rundown of your top 10. AJ Myers. Locks into the pole over Danny Formal and Jake French by 63 thousandths of a second, separating the three. Vincenzo Saracino, one-tenth of a second back. The Privateer, P4. Then it's David Greco putting another PSL carding Brellard inside the top five. Colin Daly's DRT and sixth. Michael Stevens, another Privateer entry in seventh. Gianno Torino, eighth. Josh Conker, ninth. Baylor Griffin, tenth. And Ron John, that's it. No that's more it. lapping sessions. Right. It's, uh, it's time we go racing here. It's all for the money now. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm <laughs> not it's yet. It's all for the glory. Not yet. It's, not, <laughs> not it's for all, the, all for the glory. Exactly. All to set up here. And uh, 
Again, you know, at Qualify, we do apologize about not having the ticker up, but we love to uh, give you guys all the action that we can. I know for myself, uh, after uh, a bit of a long night for not the most fun reasons, uh, I was struggling to get through qualifying. But uh, look here, Kyle. Let's uh, let's see. We uh, The Rock Cup crew, you know, we have a, a really nice catering group. And I went to go over and get a chocolate chip cookie, and I realized that they were just sitting there, and uh, everybody was working. And uh, there's only, you know, about five or, or six. Oh, I just took the whole Perfect. platter. Perfect. Absolutely. So we're ready. We're ready for heat racing. Let's do it. Let's uh, kick it over to commercial, guys. We'll come back here, and uh, we'll get set to go green with VLR Junior. So stick with us. Heat number one for all classes here from St. Petersburg up next. I'm David Serra, 18-time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits a driver who's just starting out in the sport all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're going to be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, and on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top-grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at revperformancematerials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials. Go, go Ron John, let's uh, go over the starting grid here really quickly. Aiden Ingrata and Charlie Smith make up row number one here as they bring the VLR Juniors to the green. Up next will be G3 Argeros and Cooper Shipman. Second row. Caleb Gaffera, Christian Cameron, row three, here we go. Green flag to turn one. We're underway in the field. Gonna circle their way around the camera and everybody makes it cleanly through the opening corner and it's the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speeds that get away to one and two. Ingrata over Argyros, and uh, then right behind him, Stephen Miller with a great start headed to turn six. Look at the aggressive block there by G3 as Miller goes to the outside through seven. Good move through the final sector here by Agar Argyros to hang on here as they come down the front straightaway. Nice gap forming for Aiden Ingrata. Battle for the second spot. Miller with a slide job into one. There, nice view of that one. One of those things that you don't want to happen is allow somebody like Aiden Ingrata to get out there in front and put out that gap. I think the what first time by was already out uh, almost uh, a tenth. Excuse me, nine tenths of a second over the second place driver. That's yeah. happened before. We've seen it happen time and time again. They get out there in front, and unless the guys behind them decide to work together, we'll have to wait and see as they just put in lap number one, coming by start finish for the second time. Heat race number one. Yeah, and Grada's lead healthfully growing right now, up and over a second. Back to this group here, battling for P2, 3, 4. Led by Miller, then Argyros, then Charlie Smith. Then we find Cooper Shipman in the Iron Rock Tony Cart. His teammate, Cameron Reed, behind him. She's up five positions. The Racing Cajun, P6. Graham Tremel, P7. 
Christian Cameron lost a couple spots here, and they're side by side as uh, Charlie Smith able to throw a Gyros to the wind. And look at that move by Cooper Shipman. What a dive bomb in the final corner on the Charlie Smith who throws a block into one. Little bump and run by a Gyros. And oh, Charlie Smith, he's going to lose about three more spots here as he tries to get down in line and at least get clear of a couple. Good move around the outside for Elio Meza, and it's all broken loose here on uh, lap number four. Yeah, watching these guys trying to make those move dive bomb down here into the inside of turn number one, bouncing as they go through it. Not everybody able to get through through completely cleanly, but nonetheless able to continue on here. Aiden Ingrata out in front. Steven Miller now solidly in that second position. He himself up sub five positions, but again, Cameron Reed once again on the move, now up seven positions up into that fourth spot for the 809. Yeah, Cameron Reed's just been keeping her nose pretty clean, to be honest. Hasn't really put a wheel wrong. Uh, has been really smart about where she's been putting her, her cart right now. And we're watching again Charlie Smith, who is uh, right behind Graham Tremel, heading into the back sector of the racetrack. One big line of go-karts there to that back left hairpin. And they'll work their way through the final sector here. And coming on to the front straight away, four laps completed. Watching this midfield battle while Aiden Ingrata continues to pull away. We uh, will go side by side with this battle here as our Jenna Tommy has caught up with our fast qualifier in rock shifter, AJ Myers. Thank you. I'm here with AJ Myers who qualified P1 in rock shifter. How was your race or how was your qualifying? Um, it started off kind of sloppy, got a little bit of traffic, cleared uh, back a little bit and got two laps straight and that was enough for pull. Yeah. Have you found any challenges this weekend? Uh, just the track's bumpy, it's hard to to be under control out there when there's so many bumps, but it's been a pretty straightforward weekend for us. Great, we're happy for you. Who's been helping you out? Uh, you know, the whole Magic Cart USA squad, FDE engines, my dad on the carburetor, Greyhound seats, Root images, Bream, all of them. You've got a lot of people backing you. We're rooting for you this weekend. Thank you so much, AJ. Back to you guys. Right, thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Here, we'll go back to the racetrack. We got yellow flags flying for an incident further down on the order. And I believe that, uh, I'm not sure who we've got actually right over there, just blocked by the barriers. Looks to be one of the Alessandros racing entries, maybe. If not, a good wood cartways OTK. Down the front stretch, though, let's go back to Cameron Reed. She is under heavy fire from uh, G3 Argyros uh, for fourth at the moment. Uh, up the road is Cooper Shipman. He and Stephen Miller have pulled away from his Iron Rock teammate in Cameron Reed. They're second and third. You can see the gap there headed for turn number six. Big gap back to uh, up to Aiden Ingrata, 2.2 seconds down the road from the top, to, uh, from second and third. Uh, in fact, he's not even in view here as you watch them go through the final sector, but he'll be coming into view when we go to the front straightaway, I believe. Now, still too far down the order, so we'll see if Cooper Shipman can reel in Stephen Miller here. We're just getting past the halfway point. Six in, six to go, Ron John. Eight, uh, six tenths of a second from P1 to, or from P2 to P3. Ingrata just putting more laps on him, pulling further and further away. Amazing. Absolutely amazing how that happens. And he, again, just absolute from the start. Gets a good, clean start, able to get out there and just continue to kind of put himself a little bit further, a little bit further. I believe now he's out to 2.8 second lead there over Stephen Miller. Miller's still got a little bit of a gap back to uh, Cooper Shipman right now in that third spot. Cameron Reed, as you had mentioned. Still got uh, G3 Argeros all over her back bumper. Charlie Smith there hanging in in six. Haley Omez the seventh. Christian Cameron trying to make his way up the order. Now in the eighth spot. Graham Trammell ninth. And Oscar Eiliff, the Iron Rock driver, right now hanging on in that tenth position. Yeah, Charlie. Aiden Ingrata, man, he just continues lap after lap, putting the card exactly where he needs to be. And he's coming to see the double sticks this time. This battle here will keep our eyes on loosely between G3 Argyros, Charlie Smith, and uh, Cameron Reed here coming down the front stretch. Smith closing up to Argyros. We'll see if he gives a little bumper back. Again, he's been fighting uphill after the contact that knocked him back down the order. And that was off of Argyros' front bumper, but Argyros also was getting shoved from behind. So can't fully put that on the SCR Red Speed Pilot. But... Uh, again, that battle for fourth here is what we're watching on screen. We're going to go ahead 
and uh, move forward to this battle for second as Miller is under pressure from Shipman. Look at that move into the final corner. Just got him there, I believe. And uh, Stephen Miller now finds himself way back down the order in third. So nice move by Cooper Shipman here coming to the white flag. Takes over second. Let's pick back up our leader. Here's Ingrata headed for six. Aiden Ingrata continued lap after lap to continue to put a little bit of more distance on those second on the second place driver of uh, Cooper Shipman. Aiden's going to cruise to this uh, heat race number one victory as he looks up and heads towards the start finish. Bam! Takes the checkered flag. First heat race winner of the weekend here. Aiden Ingrata, Cooper Shipman in second. It'll be Stephen Miller third. Cameron Reed hangs on into that fourth spot. G3 Argaros in fifth. It's Charlie Smith up next. Haley Omeza seventh. Christian Cameron ends up in eighth. Oscar Iliff ninth. And Graham Trammell will round out your top ten. So our first heat race in the bank. Yep, wrapped on up here, folks. We will uh, take a short commercial break. When we come back, VL Art Sr. getting set to go green here live from St. Petersburg. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novus Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. So welcome back from St. Petersburg here. Ron John Ebersole, myself, Xander Clements, calling the action live for the second round of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. And uh, we just wrapped up our first heat race, VLR Junior. You can see here through the fence line that your VLR seniors are getting set to go green. Lots of uh, movement here in the paddock. It's uh, just kind of slightly overcast, guys. We've had a little bit of sunshine throughout the day. Just enough to maybe get a little bit of uh, a little bit of a Florida suntan going on, but nothing all uh, too crazy no. here in St. Pete. Nothing like the crazy weather that, for whatever reason, has been following us down to Super South Florida to Homestead yes. the last few weeks. Yeah. We've been going down there. No rain right. in the forecast. No rain here today. No rain yesterday. We just have been very nice, fortunate with that for sure. Beautiful weekend here, and I, I honestly I love going to the West Coast of Florida. Um, you know, you get the sunset versus the sunrise. Right, right. You, you just I don't know. Everything around here seems seems just seems just nice. You know, it's very clean. Um, I just you know I wish we were staying in a little nice hotel. And that's not the knock on the rock, guys. I don't know what's going on in town. There is no room. I think to it's sleep. called IndyCar next weekend. Right? Well, I mean, there's that, booking next, this weekend there's that next weekend. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. not this week. I mean, look, I I wish we were the ones that were selling out the right. weekend. And, Me too. You know, we had a hundred thousand fans here. We don't. IndyCar obviously comes here to the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg next weekend. You've got a lot of former go karters up there. Pretty much the entire IndyCar field has, at one point or another, raced a go kart, whether it was just in their previous years as a as an up and coming driver or of course continues to race like will power joseph right. newgarden you've got uh you know kyle kirkwood uh you know obviously oliver Askew not in the series anymore pato award very recent here yes. uh driver those i mean pretty much all your young that, guys uh, very francesco well, right? ran Devlin. with us in rock vegas right um a lot of talent and and again it's, it's just so cool to see the disciplines overlap as much as they do when the schedules align those guys can come run the winter tours normally they can normally come over and run the vegas events at the end of the year in karting um, you know, it, it's 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 their dirt racing if they were NASCAR drivers. Well, you know, you know for Devlin, it went from crazy, uh, you know, uh, Las Vegas mm -hmm. 
to Daytona to win a nice Rolex oh, in yeah. 24 that's hours. Oh, yeah. Pretty so nice watch that's that he got himself. A, yes, a few it weeks is. Ago. That's uh, quite, a, quite a win for him as well. Definitely. Well, uh, again, we're just killing ourselves a little bit of time here as we get set to go green for VLR Seniors opening heat race on the weekend here. We've talked about the racetrack here at St. Petersburg, how gnarly it is with the bumps that are here this week. And again, as the rubber is coming down, it seems to be, as many drivers are saying, getting a little bit smoother, a little bit better. Uh, but overall, it still is a rough, rough ride here around the racetrack at St. Pete. And these guys are this. This class is the first of many that are very tight. The VLR Junior class we knew had a little bit of a decent gap through it. VLR Senior, Rock Senior, Rock Junior, and uh, of course the Rock field. Shifter. I mean, there's a right. lot of tight, tight fields here. Mini and Micro Rock look really tight, especially Mini Rock. Um, so, you know, we should see some really close racing once they get this track cleaned up. Looking forward to it. Maryland USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. So welcome back here. We are getting ready to go green for VLR Senior. We've caught up with uh, our uh, VLR Junior Heat 1 winner, Aiden Ingrata here. We'll be talking to him as soon as we get this one clean and green. Jeremy Fletcher going to be getting set to go green here this time by as uh, the field works its way around the final sector of the racetrack and gets formed up. Fletcher on the pole, Daniel Ali second, Wes Duchak third, Ryan Norberg lines up the outside of row number two in fourth, and it's Adam Ali and Callum Baxter, row three, Cameron Stellar and Brooke Berry, row four, Grayson Redson and Gab Gabriel Cower, row five. Looking for the green flag here this time by, and we're gonna get it down to turn number one. Good start for the inside groove. They'll pick up one, maybe two spots. A couple of carts around there in turn Multiple number one. Multiple drivers there. Four collected in total. A couple of the leading edge motorsports, OTKs. I think that's almost all teammates. Is it really? Getting together, yeah. A bunch of white and yellow coming together. Not a way you want to start your weekend here coming into your teammate. That means you got to go back to the pit and deal with them all the way overnight into tomorrow morning. But right. nonetheless, great start here for Jeremy Fletcher. And Wes Duchak leads the next group there with Ollie, uh, Daniel Ali in third. Ryan Norberg on the hunt here for that spot. Looking inside P3 for the 948. So good position made uh, there for Ryan Norberg. He'll quickly go to work on Weston Duchak as he tries to close the Jeremy Fletcher. While he does that here, let's send it down to our Kendall Hedge, who has caught up with VLR Junior pole sitter and Heat 1 winner Aiden Ingrata. Aiden, you probably have a really good start to the weekend. You have two poles and the first heat race win. How do you feel right now? Yeah, I feel really good. The chassis, on each class, the engine's really good from Comus V Live Racing Engines. It's been really good, honestly. How did you stretch out that lead there by over almost five seconds? I don't know. It was just hitting my marks head down and then just pulled away. So you must feel really good about this weekend. What are you hoping for tomorrow? I'm just hoping for the same thing, head down just do consistent laps and hopefully pull away like I did that here. How much has the track changed from qualifying to the first heat race? Not that much, just a little bit more grip, but it's, it's getting there. Well, congratulations and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. 
Back to you guys. Well, here again, big uh, thanks to Aiden and Grotta for taking some time now. We uh, saw Ryan Norberg work his way around Weston Duchak, his teammate, to get to second. Norberg did uh, stay second most of the qualifying session, so he, we knew he had pace. And last time by Ron John, you, looked, purple. you, you, yeah. you saw it. Now, he's only purple by two hundredths. He's 1.2 seconds back um, from Fletcher in a short 12-lap heat race here on a 36-second racetrack. Doable, right. but he needs to be a little bit faster than where he's at right now. It's another case of that get out in front and run, 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 try to get, hit your spots. As I was listening to Aiden talking about that, he just said he was consistent, hitting his spots over and over again, just trying to continue to, to gap the field, and that's exactly what Jeremy's doing as he went purple the last time by, fastest on the track, a 1.391 second lead over there uh, uh, on Ryan. Norberg knows solidly in that second spot. And then his uh, teammate, as you had mentioned, Wes Duchak, hanging on to the third spot, Ali fourth. Callum Baxter right now in fifth. Radzinzin uh, right now, Grecian has moved up now into the sixth spot. Ali Adam in the seventh. Brooke Berry eighth. Gabriel Cawer in the ninth position. And it's Cameron Steller right now in tenth. Again, just five laps of the 12. Next time by, they should be picking up the halfway flags here. Yeah, here, and uh, well, it's been single file and tight. Not much action there in that group of three. There goes Fletcher by here. We'll pick up Norberg. Norberg last time by lost another tenth of a second as we've got problems in turn two. Looks like uh, we got one driver parked against the inside retaining wall. And that is the Nash, Mo or no, the, the uh, Los Brothers 959. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alexander Dubon. Yeah, Alexander Dalbon. Dalbon. Yeah, yeah, so he's going to be out of it there. It's, uh, Looks like they're going to get that cart up and over the barrier and out of the way safely. Yes, sir. Six in, six to go. Norberg that time by did go a little bit quicker once again over Fletcher, but he only could beat him by maybe half a tenth of a second. Uh, look at back to this group here coming to turn six. There's Duchak again over Ollie. And uh, Callum Baxter, who's up one spot on the day or on the session. Grayson Redson up three in the techno, and uh, kind of closing in on the back of that grouping, heading to the final sector. Here's a wide look at the gaps down to turn number one. Jeremy Fletcher, five laps to go, seven laps complete, and the go-win race is Tony Car Driver just looking in good form, although he gave up. Three tenths that time by Ron John. Yeah, I was uh, I was going to say, Zendra. I was looking as we had had the incident here in turn number one. We talked that it might be teammates. I believe it might have been brothers. I believe the Pegrams were involved here because they're the last couple of guys to come back by, and it's like, was it brothers that were? In wow. <laughs> okay, that that'll make it even a little more interesting. Father daughter. Father daughter. Just getting word here from our producer, Kyle Cuthbertson. Father so Riley daughter. must be the, the daughter and then uh, Larry the father. Yeah, so as I see that, I'm like, oh, that could be very interesting. I don't know if that counts as, like, you know, <laughs> bad parenting in some way. <laughs> Taking out your own kid in the turn one of the, of the rate. I mean, at least, at least we know who's going to be paying for it. Exactly. Unless it's the other way around. If it's the other way around, uh, someone might be wiping a go-kart. Wax on, wax, wax off all night for taking out herself and dad. I see Ryan picking up just a little bit there on Jeremy, although Jeremy stretched it out to 1.2 over the second place driver. And as I say that it's down, yeah, it's still a 1.2 second lead. No real move there. But Ryan solidly now in that second spot. The real battle is going on back behind them. And that's going to be Duchak, Ali, and Rizinzi, Rizinzian. Uh, in that fifth spot, as those three continue to battle, actually make it all the way back to six. It's Brooke Berry as well. So, yeah, Brooke Berry coming on strong here uh, as uh, the the race starts to wind down, trying to latch on to Gabriel Cower, who got by her early on in the session and pulled away a little bit. First, I was just going to say it looked like Ryan on the track had gotten a little closer, but as you look at the time, it doesn't really look like he. It's just, he picked up anything. It's fluctuated around that 1.2 second mark here while we look at this grouping, third, fourth, and fifth. No movement here for Wes Duchak from behind of uh, Daniel Ali trying to get by. Race. Grayson Redzin is the driver on the move. The Techno Kart up four spots. Biggest mover so far here this session. Trying to make it five as he works Daniel Ali. Ali is really good in the back sector 
closes up here, but uh, we'll see. Redson's on his bumper, coming, looking. Here goes Ali to block into one. And he'll safely do so as Redson falls in line behind him. Half a lap to go. Let's go back up front. Whoa, what has gone wrong for Jeremy Fletcher? He's backed up. Here comes Ryan Norberg. Half a cart back into turn six on the final lap. Jeremy Fletcher's had a, a massive issue here the last lap and a half. Here goes Norberg looking. Not able to go in the back hairpin. I don't think he can do anything. Maybe the final corner. Does he try it? Going to be a drag race down his front stretch. Fletcher blocked it nicely here. He should be good. Norberg will not get there, but Jeremy Fletcher. Bam. I don't know if that was a mistimed lap of kind of backing off, but he dropped six tenths last time by from where he was at and uh, allowed Norberg to eat that gap alive. Might have been toying with him, might have had an issue. I mean, who knows? Yeah, you know, I had mentioned that on the track, it looked like he had made up some, some ground, but according to the times, he really hadn't. But then we look up, and lo and behold, he's right there on his back bumper. So certainly something must have happened. Yeah, I have no idea what was going on there uh, with our VLR senior driver. What I do know is we did also talk to Jeremy Fletcher that we talked to yesterday afternoon. Of course, Fletcher pulling double duty. VLR senior, Rock senior, really good in one, looking for a little more speed in the other. Here's what he had to say about his weekend so far. Jeremy, pretty busy behind you. Practice hasn't been too kind overall so far. What are your thoughts on this place? I mean, it's a pretty bumpy track, but I think we're overall pretty good pace and just hoping we can get faster throughout the weekend. What do you think you're missing right now? A little bit of driving, definitely, and just keep working on the go-kart to get over the bumps and just keep getting better. Is there anything specifically here that seems to be a secret for the fast guys where you're, you're lacking they've got? Um, just waiting on throttle a little bit longer is mainly the biggest thing here I can find, so that's it. And how's the track been taking rubber? You we're on a way different surface than Pompano. I mean, it's taking grip pretty good. It's just the bumps are in the center of the track. So anytime you get into the corner, you hit one of those, and you're gone if you hit it wrong. Sweet. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Hi, I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere. Uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together. Well, back here at St. Petersburg here, taking a look down the front straightaway, and you can see the palm trees lining it. It is uh, so cool to be racing here in, in downtown St. Petersburg, or, or pretty darn close to it, right next door to Tropicana Field, the home of the Tampa Bay Rays. It's, uh, you know, you see people walking around, obviously right by the interstate here on the track side, but then on the paddock side, I mean, there's guys just walking by, I mean, you know, taking a look over, seeing the... The, the big rigs, the massive tents, and going, what in the world I have is noticed, going on? I have noticed as well, as I was looking out that direction earlier, I had seen a couple of the folks sitting up in the balconies over here in these, uh, I would believe that must be condominiums that were watching some of the racing earlier. Just taking it in, checking yeah. it out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Boy, same. Boy, they could have some tremendous seating up there. Oh, man, that, that is a, a really good view. I'll see if we can get one of our camera guys to kind of pan upward. <laughs> towards uh, that building we've got. It's behind the final corner. That would be a really good view if one of our camera guys could look up there at some point and show you guys what we're talking about. It's no different than the way we were in Rock Vegas right. this year where we had a, a number of parking garages and um, you know buildings around. There was that massive, massive apartment complex that was uh, right next door. Yeah, and all those and folks sitting out on the balcony watching. It was 
I loved it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there, there's one of them. That one's a little further off in the corner. I think that's almost behind the paddock area. But uh, definitely, some, you know, I mean, we're surrounded. We got a really cool city skyline that's kind of like all around us um, that, you know, is, is close. And uh, there we go. That's, that's what I'm talking about right there. They are right over the racetrack. I mean, literally from probably the sixth or seventh story up, just right out the window. Or, if, you know, that doesn't look like a nice enough building to have a pool on it, though. If it had a pool on it, then you go up there, you poolside. I don't know. Look where they're located. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty good prime property. Right this is here. a great property. Yeah. It, it just doesn't look like that pretty of a building, right? You know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe, and, maybe and I'm wrong. Downtown St. Pete is absolutely beautiful. Oh, it is. Gorgeous. It is great area. Beautiful. You know, beautiful. lots of places to see. You can go by the water. You got a bunch of cool restaurants. Right. You know, there's cool places to go out. There's just a whole lot going on here. You know, you got the 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 Tampa Bay Zoo. I think it is. There's right. a, the aquarium nearby. Um. There's a there's a lot going on here in uh, in about an hour radius, and of course you know there's all the water sports you got going on and, as well. And we talk about things going on. It isn't that far away. Where I was just asking about how how much or how much time it would take to go from here to Daytona, because obviously come Sunday we've got a little racing going on over there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's just a little bit going on over there here. Let's uh, let's send it on down here. Our Jenna Tommy's got uh, not one but two drivers with her now, and uh, we need some explanations here, Jenna as to what went down on the final lap, because I don't think anybody knows what was going on here between these two guys, Ryan Norberg and Jeremy Fletcher. Jenna? Thank you. I'm here with Ryan Norberg and Jeremy Fletcher, who were P1 and P2 in our first VLR Senior Heat. Guys, tell me about that race. You were keeping him on his toes. You ran away for a bit. So, I mean, I was doing a good job trying to get back through the field, and honestly, you know, I could have stuffed him. I could have passed him. I could have won the race, but I felt like, you know, Jeremy's a young guy. He needs a win. He needs that confidence. So I thought, let's let's make it fair. I'll give him this win, and then I'll take the next one. Yeah. Um, you were saying you were you were saying you're a bit winded coming off this track, though. Are you sure he's not just giving you a run for your money? What do you have to say about that? I think he's getting old and washed up now. Come on, Ryan. You're getting winded. <laughs> you getting winded? I I was saying that in confidence. So no one was supposed to say that. Well, then my bad. What are you guys looking forward to going into the next heat? Well, hopefully get a better opening lap. You know, the opening lap is where I kind of fell back, and, and that's what put me, you know, so far away from Jeremy. So if I can get a better opening lap, uh, and then hopefully it could be a race from there on. Yeah, what about you? I mean, I like my opening lap. I got a pretty big gap. I mean, just hoping I don't catch the lappers again and get held up. But other than that, it was pretty good. All right, thank you guys so much. Good race to the both thank of you. you. Later. Thank you, Jenna, here, and uh, that was good funny. to see those boys having some fun. So it wasn't the lap traffic there. It was just kind of off camera that kind of tripped Jeremy Fletcher up uh, in VLR Senior. But uh, obviously both of them having good spirits about it, enjoying racing each other. No and, uh, you know, I like the little bit of ribbon going back and forth. Uh, oh, yeah, I could have got you. Oh, no, you're <laughs> washed up. <laughs> you're old. <laughs> I mean, that's that's new versus old. I mean, that's rookie versus veteran right there. And uh, obviously a lot of respect between the two of each other um, and, and a lot of clean racing. And hopefully we'll see a lot of the same here from this group. Mini Rock, Car Carson Weinberg, Isaac Malkut, War Green on a big field. Headed to turn number one, the biggest one so far this afternoon. How will the first hairpin look? It looks clean. And everybody so far, makes so it good. to turn two. Yeah, Cameron, uh, Carson Weinberg. I keep saying Cameron because Cameron has had a great February as well. The brothers on the CRGs leading here in uh, St. Petersburg. Cameron just a little bit further back in senior rock. Carson showing the way here in mini. And as uh, we look back to second battle for P2, side by side, Salvador de la Vecchia. Just losing that spot out to the Perlin, I believe, a Jack Iliff who's gone by. So Iliff to second, De La Vecchia to third, Max Christie is fourth, Isaac Malk at P5. Boy, not taking those uh, big names long to make their way up from back down the order as we continue to see folks on the move. Dramalov, Asin right now, the 171 already up three positions. Back down the way, we'll look at Jackson Wolding. Jackson up four spots. Alessandro Trucheau up a couple of positions already. Again, just lap number one in the bank of going nine here for our mini rockers. Carson Weinberg was leading the pack. First lap as they come racing down the front stretch once again past the start finish. Still out in front. Weinberg, Iliff, Delavecchia, Christie, Malquit, your top five. And Malquit just going by Christie right there on screen there. That was for fourth. Good move by the 175 of Isaac Malkut. 
as uh, he takes them out of turn at number three and down the back straight away. So nice move for the uh, driver who still hasn't even gotten a full season in the mini rock classes yet and uh, has already racked up a number of wins. And the AKT Racing Team driver trying to charge back forward again after uh, starting on the outside of the front row. Watching the field come on through here the final corner. Let's see uh, if Jack Eilis made any bit of a dent into Carson Weinberg's lead. Three laps complete. Weinberg a 38-87. I left 38.75, so he's one-tenth of a second to the better. So he's closing that gap to the race lead uh, as Carson Weinberg takes them out of turn number three. Looks like this time out of three and four, Weinberg with a much better exit, and that gap opens up back to uh, Jack Iliff in the 144. Just think back on, the, again, the, uh, the race that Iliff, both the boys had back in um, Las Vegas. I believe one of them in the final race passed 32 carts to end up in the third position and make it onto the podium with his brother. I believe that was Jack at the time. He was the younger one. Yep. Oscar's moved up now. And so Jack, again, showing he's got great, great speed, sitting right there off the back bumper of Carson Weinberg. As once again, they had just come by, put lap number four in the bank, working lap number five of nine. And as we watch this uh, forming battle here for third between Isaac Malkut and Salvador de la Vecchia down into the back hairpin. Malkut not able to get down the inside, but close. Half a cart length away, head to the final corner. Down the front stretch, should have a, a good run here if he can. Look at this run as well, up for the lead. Here goes Malkut, also passed for the lead as well, just ahead of him. That is Eilif and Weinberg, and Weinberg crosses him over. Great crossover by Carson Weinberg. Puts Jack Eilif back to second. But the pass was completed, I believe, for third. So behind Iliff, it's now Isaac Melkett and the driver that started second. Yeah, that's right. There with a quick whip turnaround for Jack Iliff. He sees that the second fastest driver on the racetrack is now behind him. Lots going on here at Mini Rock, Garage. Right, no John? doubt, because last time you were looking down there just trying to see who was our purple lap. You had to go all the way down to the 15th place driver to see it. So... Still a lot of racing going on back behind this group now that it's bunched up. Our top group now uh, looks like it's four, looks like five is going to start to make his way up there as well. And again, it's Weinberg, Iliff, Malquit, Delavecchia, Christie, Bradley. Sarah's up there in that sixth spot. Ty Fisher, seventh. Ace and Dramalev in the eighth position. Asher Oxnard, another name I hadn't talked a whole lot about. Great to see Asher on the move now in ninth. And. Uh, Luis Simona Sanchez right now in that 10th spot. So no change at the top, but still, iLife right there all over the back bumpers. They come racing by once again. Yeah, he's close. He's, he needs to make a move sooner rather than later, though, as they uh, work their way through turns one and two, and now over to three and four. We're less than two laps away from the end of this thing. Seven are complete. White flag will come this time by. Carson Weinberg uh, has that had that gap evaporate the last few laps. It's now down to about a half car length. Back to Jack Iliff and company. There goes Malkut. We're going to see a challenge for the lead here. Final lap this time. White flag in the air. Weinberg knows it. He takes him down to the bottom side. Iliff has to follow. He opens up into one. Weinberg parks it nicely on the apex. No move made there. How good can you defend here on this racetrack in the low horsepower stuff? Carson Weinberg doing a good job of it. Iliff right there. Now we saw some guys be able to make an aggressive move work in the final sector. I'm sure Weinberg will close it off into six. He does. So no pass attempt there in six. Over through seven. Turn eight. Weinberg looks back. Doesn't think he can get there. They're all kind of somewhat defending. And, and final turn. Oh. Not enough to get there. Carson Weinberg plays the defensive game nicely and across the line. Bam! Wins heat number one. Jack Iliff, 200 short there as he pulled out a line to go down the inside. Isaac Malk at third. Salvador de la Vecchia third or fourth. Max Christie fifth. Sarah Bradley, Ty Fisher, Asher Rockstein, Luis Sumana, and Aysen Dramalev, the top ten. A few movers kind of up and down, up, uh, up two, two spots, up four spots for Ty Fisher. Down five for Faith and Saradpun, but no DNFs, no big right, wrecks. I right. mean, all 27 of these mini rockers played nicely with each other here, Ron John. Good run. Good race for them. Good start for the heat racings for the weekend for them. 
Uh, again, Carson out there able to take it uh, flag to flag. For his first victory in the bank. Heat race number one in the bank for them. Yeah, heat race number one in the books here for Mini Rock. So more racing to come. Again, the Master Rock drivers are next up on... Uh, no, Shifter Master Rock are next up on tap here. So Shifter Master Rock. Then we'll go to Senior Rock before we get followed up by our Micros Masters, Juniors, Master VLRs, and Shifter Rock. So a couple races in the books. Three in total down. Plenty more coming your way. And for Master Shifter Rock, it's all one man. They're following. That is the 516 of Jordan Muster. The racing continues after the break here. Stick with us live from St. Petersburg. It's round two of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit, and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits the driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're gonna be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to break in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. 
we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top-grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at revperformancematerials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials. Maryland USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Took us a moment there to get the track fully cleared up, but here we go. Rock Shifter Master going to get set to go green. Jordan Musser and Cole Mathewson are going to make up the front row between the PSO Corning Burrell Art and the Ansa Motorsports Formula K. It's going to be very interesting. Going to be the first time we see a standing start from our drivers as these are shifters. So what they do is they'll come back around, line up, get them all formed up, and then we'll... Uh, Hopefully get underway with a good clean start. And 20 plus uh, Rock Shifter Master drivers here this weekend. So again, a lot here and ready to compete as they work their way around the first and second sectors. They'll slowly begin to back the field up, slow the pace back down. Maybe do a practice start or two in the back sector before they make their way onto the front stretch to meet up with uh, a few of our Rock Cup USA officials that will get them into the start boxes. So here we go. Mosser's got them at a crawl out of the final turn. He wants to get it slow, then clear out the carburetor, and then make sure he places himself very nicely and strategically onto his inside lane start box, which, of course, is going to be a lot dirtier than the outside lane of the racetrack, but he's got the preferred groove to turn number one. Mosser lines up on the inside. Matthews into the outside. Nicholas Bedard puts it PSL 1-3 on the inside of row two. Daniel Debos matches that with his Ansa Motorsports FK to the outside of row two. In fourth, Nico Ronde puts the Ansa guys one or two four five. He starts the inside of Rennie Martinelli. Then it's Scott Presti, your round one main event winner. Patrick Otto Madsen, Farshad Bagheri, and Corey Klein. And more lined up, ready. On to our head flag with Bobby Radovoy. We're green. Keep an eye on them as they go into one. Looking good so far. Yeah, very nice move around the outside for Nicholas Bedard. Almost able to get by on uh, your second place driver, Cole Mathewson. Mathewson holds strong. Great start for Jordan Musser. Look at the wide view into six here. Nice and healthy advantage as they go through the infield hairpin. Once again, something you don't want to allow to happen for Jordan to get out in front, as we've seen the last several races. A couple of guys managed to get out there and kind of walk away, allow the rest of the folks to race. We'll have to see how things shake out. It's just coming by the start finish for the first time. Lap number one in the bank of 12. Going to be a quick race for these guys as they get around in a quick 37 seconds. So, Yeah, 12 laps here. I mean, 12 seems like a good number, but realistically, that's going to be just about seven minutes long here, the heats in St. Petersburg. Even though it's a, a shorter total minutes on the racetrack, it is very physical. Not a lot of time to breathe or relax or, or uh, relax your hands even. Uh, on the steering wheel, you are on it, on the gas, on the shifter, on the brakes. 
At any given time, we got one driver there way wide. That was one of the VTM Racing Engines drivers there in uh, the final couple corners. As you watch Matthewson here through turn number one, working the wheel and closing into two as he tries to reel in Musser. That time by, lost another two tenths. Musser's lead, eight tenths of a second and growing over the Rock Shifter Master Field. 20 drivers in total, two laps complete, coming to put three in the books this time. Once again, Jordan Musser showing his uh, abilities on a track like this, just smooth. He's so smooth as he continues to stretch it out here in front as he comes back by the start finish. Look and see if he had picked up a little bit. Yes, he has. He's out to 1.1 second lead. Once again, goes purple. Passes out on the track. Matthewson staying, still hanging on to second. Nicholas Bedard, the PSL karting driver, up into third. D-Boss, Daniel, now up into fourth. And it's Patrick Otto Madsen, the Ansa Motorsports driver, right now hanging on into fifth position, up three spots so far for Patrick. But Jordan Musser, 1.1 second lead that last time by, already getting ready to come back by the start finish. Once again, put lap number three in the bank. We're working lap, excuse me, four in the bank, working lap number five of 12. Watching Nicholas Bedard come through turn number one and two here. Again, he is just kind of all on his lonesome in third. 1.2 seconds uh, ahead of Daniel Debos, 1.2 back from Cole Matthewson. In fact, the entire top four with pretty even gaps all to each other. Then it goes back to behind Patrick Otto Madsen in the fifth spot. And uh, he's uh, not terribly far back from Daniel Debos in fourth. He's made up three positions from the drop of the green. He's also got Nico Ronde relatively close there, fellow ANSA driver. So you can see that group of three there just at the edge of the frame behind Bedard with five laps complete, seven to go. Well, I tell you what, you can tell that uh, Muster's getting some good runs off the quarter as he came through turn number three, I believe, right here. Just a great launch off the, off the corner there as he went down towards turn number five. We'll pick up a little bit of this battle here between the TVs and the FKs just behind Bedard in third. Half play flags coming this time as they rock it onto the front straightaway, though. So let's see it. Jordan Musser, six in, six to go. And the PSL card in Burrell Art, multi-time pro shifter and master shifter, national race winner, national champion, super national champion, Rock Vegas champion, winter tour champion. Right. I mean, the list goes on and on for the Texan here. And uh, like you said, Ron John, I mean, it's, it's a good way to kind of prove to all these guys that, all right, you had a race without me. You had your fun. Now I'm going to go and mop the floor with all of you here this <laughs> week. And we'll see if we can maybe talk to Jordan uh, real soon because he is just dominant right now. Even watching his uh, line as he goes into turn number one, he just seems so more smooth. Not all that bouncing as he was doing. Just a good smooth lap after lap driver. Yeah, he's been a doing this a long time. Super talented guy. Uh, and uh, again, coming to put eight laps in the books here. Four laps to go for Jordan Musser. Through the, the last two corners, down the front straight away. Blue flag starting to fly for a number of the slower drivers here because he's going to catch the lap traffic of Joseph Catania sooner rather than later. Only about four seconds back at a pace that is about four seconds per lap faster. So he's going to get to Catania here. We mentioned, uh, we talked to Jeremy Fletcher, the lap traffic tripped, tripped him up. And we're getting lap traffic here in just the heat races. So that may come even more so as the weekend draws on. Yeah, we obviously didn't happen to see that lap track, uh, traffic that is for uh, Jeremy Fletcher, so it was obviously we were very curious as to what had happened. Either way, here there, here's uh, this grouping in the middle. For, uh, Patrick Otto Madsen having gone by. Rennie Martinelli reeled him in, got past him. Oh, no, problems for Nicholas Bedard. Nicholas Bedard, the Burrell R driver that was running in third, I don't know where he's at or if he's pulled in. Way back over. Oh, you got eyes on him. Yeah, you're right. Over in the back. Over right the after back this side. section here. Turn six and seven. Nick Bedard out of this one there. So Nicholas Bedard finds himself on the sidelines. Meanwhile, the double sticks will fly this time by. Battles all around here. Patrick Otto Madsen finds himself up into third. Oh, 
going we into the wall is Cole Mathewson. We had an incident there between the 581 and Cole Mathewson going into turn one. That back marker was none aware that he was right there. Oh, no. Cole Mathewson out of second. Makes contact with the lap traffic of Joseph Catania and takes him out here on the final two circuits. So Jordan Musser leads this chaos-filled Shifter Master Heat Race. Mathewson is gone. So is Nicholas Bedard. That's given second to this massive group and gaggle here as uh, there goes Farshad Bagheri on by, uh, the lap driver. Is that D-Boss who jumped up in the second now? Daniel D-Boss yeah, up in the second? Okay. D-Boss by Madsen, his uh, team owner. So checkered flag coming here as uh, Jordan Musser has uh, kept his nose clean. He'll round the final turn, pick up the heat race victory. Who finishes second is Bam. still yet to be determined as they come out of the final corner. Let's pick them up. Uh, there is, uh, I believe, Debos across the line on the TB. Or no, Debos across the line on the ANSA. That's the TB of Edgardo Ortiz. So Debos on the ANSA, FK second, Madsen third, Martinelli fourth, Nico Ronde fifth, McGarry sixth, Juan Unigaro seventh, Hugh Templeman eighth, Scott Presti ninth, Francesco Vassallo tenth. Twelve laps here. Twelve quick ones. Twelve quick ones. Twelve ones. It's Absolutely. I don't know exactly what happened in there with the, with the Bajar, Bedard cart, but uh, nonetheless, uh, obviously something happened, and uh, he ended up off the track and out of the race. And then that incident here going into one between the back marker and one of the drivers took him out of second position. So I immediately saw his hands up in the air, pointing at the guy. So I'm sure we probably got that somewhere on video. We'll be able to get a good look at it. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll try and take a good look here at what we've got. And uh, we'll take this time to have the commercial break because when we come back, Rock Senior, who are currently uh, all of the 32 drivers lined on the grid and set to go racing here again. They are suiting up. We are coming back with one of the headline divisions here for the Florida Winter Tour, the top 125 single speed, 35 uh, horsepower class coming your way here again. Stay, stay tuned, more action next up from St. Petersburg. I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere. Uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together.
Maryland, USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching, to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odkarts.com. We'll do row by row. Welcome back here to St. Petersburg and the Tropicana Field. The senior rock drivers get in the command to head onto the racetrack. Let's sit together your starting lineup, starting on the point. It is a couple of Brazilians on row number one. The AM Racing Engines uh, numbers 362 of Mateus Morgado and the Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic of Diego Ramos. Up next is going to be the 320, Alessandro Dottilio on the Parallel USA driver. And then up next is going to be the 365. It's Lucas Mendes, the Brazilian driver in the REM. Moving back to row number three, we're going to find ourselves with Santiago Fernandez in his career best qualifying effort. Uh, and then to his outside, it'll be the Netherlands' Marion Kremers, who was on pole until he put it in the wall right here at turn number five in qualifying. Right behind Marion would be uh, Jeremy Fletcher. Jeremy in the 322. Blake Nash will roll right behind him. Blake in the 314. Then we go behind Blake Nash. It'll be Adam Ali and Cameron Weinberg to round off your top ten. We move back here. Gianluca Savoglio and the REM Cosmic to the inside of Donovan Bonilla. Then it's Justin White and Ryan Vincent. A couple of younger drivers here starting on the inside edge of the top 15. Daniel Ali, Nolan Bauer, Noah Rosser, Laurent Legault, and Oscar Pinozo. Your top 20 going all the way through to 32 drivers. Got a they big group. are lining up out of the final corner. It'll be a late start for some drivers in the back of the field, but Morgado has them nice and slow. So here comes the back, quickly getting into position, and it is Ramos on the power early. Does he get the jump and the whole shot to the bottom? They're gonna close it off, and Ramos gets to the lead. And everybody makes it through turn number one. Diego Ramos, nice jump. We'll see if the officials say anything about it. Couple drivers together in turn two. One of them is the 369 of Santiago Fernandez. Oh man, qualified fifth, best career qualifying effort. Santiago finds wow. himself in the wall in turn two. Certainly not the um, result he was hoping for with that great start, but nonetheless, yep, involved in something there going into turn number one. That's right, trying to put 20 tons of fertilizer in a 10 ton truck with all these carts trying to go into turn number one off their start. Nonetheless, if they come back by, it's gonna be Ramos. Morgado, Marin Quimmer's now on the move up into third, pushing Alessandro Dottilio down into fourth. Jeremy Fletcher up a couple of spots right now in fifth. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Marin Quimmer's probably best start out of anybody there, up three spots on the outside lane. P6 down to P3. Uh, Dottilio down one, Fletcher up two. Uh, Peng Zhang was up seven down in 22nd, but here comes Morgado onto Ramos's bumper. We'll see how long he waits. As he knows, Kremers is there. Marion Kremers and Mateus Morgano. Look in, Morgano kind of almost narrowly closed the door off. And Kremers aggressively down the inside in turn number two. Hello, Marion Kremers to P2. Nice move down the inside of Morgano. He takes over the spot. Morgano now worries about Natulio for third. And uh, you have to get a little bit physical when you take these guys to such a short racetrack. 
They're getting up onto it, and Kremer's not wasting any time here. He is tired of being the bridesmaid. He wants to get himself his first checkered flag on American soil in quite some time. All right, once again, Tim racing back by Ramos, Kremers, Morgado, Dutilio, Fletcher, Ali, Mendez. Somebody he hadn't talked about. Jack Jeffer, Jeffers now up three positions in the eighth spot. Ryan Vincent on the move up six now in ninth. And then Cameron Weinberg hangs on still into that tenth position. But Diego Ramos right now on the point. Working lap number four of 12. And heat race number one here. Let's see them come out of the final corner here. Here comes Ramos, Kremers, Morgato. One, two, three, to Tulio trying to close. Look how much Kremers closes up to the center at turn number one. Marion Kremers starting to feel it really nicely here now, and he's finding his rhythm. Morgato was quickest overall last time by. All drivers a little bit quicker than Diego Ramos, and the Shell Pennzoil Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic going to be coming under heavy pressure here in about a lap or two as Kremers throws it in deep there, really hikes the inside rear tire into turn number eight. And out into the front straightaway, Kremers is a half cart length back. Is he close enough? Almost. Right to the bumper into one here. Let's see, does he make that move in two? Look, and he's going to do it again. Ramos goes wide. Kremers into the lead, and Ramos drops to second. Thought perhaps that was going to bring uh, Morgato along with him. But Morgato oh, right now. Oh, there he goes, There though. he goes, yep. Yeah, Morgato not going to take any time uh, wasted behind Ramos. He knows how quick Kremers looks right now. He wants to get to him. DiTulio is going to need to be equally quick as the field is starting to try and eat Diego Ramos alive. Halfway this time, six in, six to go. Big pack of carts up front, headed to turn one. And Marion Kremers continues to be out there in the lead. What a great move there to the inside there around, around Diego Ramos, which, by the way, did eventually bring along uh, Matthias Morgado. DiTulio still hanging on to that uh, fourth position, Fletcher fifth. Adam Ali, good run so far for Adam up into the sixth spot. Mendez hadn't talked a whole lot about Lucas. Hanging on to seventh. Jack Jeffers, eighth. Ryan Vincent up six spots. I noticed also Nolan Bauer had been on the move. He's up six positions. Now in the 11th spot. Still Kremers, Morgado, Ramos, Dutilio, Fletcher, your top five. Here comes Morgado. Kremers knows it, Marion. Kremers on the defensive, Morgado. Little crossover here as they come out of five. When will he make a dive to the bottom side? Kremers is going to come to see four to go this time by. He could try and block all the way to the end if he really wants this heat race victory and trigger a battle for Morgato. There they go through the final sector. Not, not close enough that time. Morgato will be close enough down the front stretch. Here he comes, looking for the lead. Mateus Morgato puts the bumper to him as Kremers sends it deep around the outside. And the world champion, Marion Kremers, is now under fire. There's Morgato. Got him into three. Ramos takes them both wide. Wow, Diego Ramos, wow. the ultimate opportunist. And, right and Morgato's back. back on him. Now let's see if he pinches Ramos wide. Here comes Kremers. Kremers going to take uh, Detulio through as well. They stack up behind Morgato. They can't let the point leader get away. Very smart driving by Mateus Morgato to out... Uh, chest match the field, and now he'll take it to the inside and block here with three to go. What a great battle here. Looks like we're, what, seven, eight deep here for the lead. We're tight. Look at the Tulio. He's going to second. Ramos into third, and Kremers is back to fourth. Kremers was hoping they'd work with him, and they try to go to work on Morgato. They're fighting for second. Morgato gets a two-car length gap. How good is the parallel of the Tulio? He closes up there. Let's see into the final corner. Double sticks coming this time. Tulio did not get a great exit. Morgato All pulls right, got two good. To go. Ramos goes in deep. Kremers is right there. This three-car group. Here goes Ramos for second. He tries to get by on Tulio. Just out of frame there this time. They'll pick him up. Ramos to P2. Tulio to third. Beating and banging on one another. As, uh, again, we've got 10 in the bank. We've got the... The two to go here at the start finish. Waiting for him to come back from the back side of the course and head down over here, come back by the start finish. And see what we got here for Mergato as he comes screaming past the start finish. Looks like he's gonna end up with about a five tenths of a second lead. 
don't think anybody's going to have enough time to make up that kind of a gap here with just one lap to go here for Mergado. And I believe that Diego Ramos still right there. That battle's going to be for the third position right now. It looks like Dottilio has it. Jeremy Fletcher, I say that, it looks like Fletcher would make possibly a move down to the inside. Yeah, they're all going crazy here yes, on the final lap as Morgado and Ramos are scot-free. Mateus Morgado rolls back through the field to win Bam. heat number one. Ramos second, Kremers third, Tulio fourth. Lucas Mendez on the final lap takes Jack Jeffers by Jeremy Fletcher. They get fifth and sixth. Fletcher seventh, Ryan Vincent eighth, Cameron Weinberg ninth, Gian Lucas Avoglio tenth. All right, if that's an example of the racing we're going to have, it's going to be a tremendous weekend. First heat race in the bank here for... And that'll do it, so... We'll leave the palm trees here. Let's talk to uh, a few of our top drivers from that one. And uh, we will uh, give you more updates from Rock Senior as we get set for racing to continue. Halfway through heat number one here in the afternoon from St. Petersburg and Tropicana Field. Stick with us, folks, live on Kart Chaser. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit, and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits the driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're gonna be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to break in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know when to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. 
We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Cart Store USA is a cart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Cart Republic and Tony Cart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials, engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at revperformancematerials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials. Maryland USA, a top level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full service driver development program with year round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Welcome back here live from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida, as uh, we get set to uh, let's kind of try and digest a little bit of what we just saw. It was uh, wild to say the least here. Our Jenna Tommy is caught up with a couple drivers inside the top five who had a uh, uh, were involved in all that battling, Marion Kremers and Alessandra Dottulio. Jenna, take it away. Hi, I'm here with Alessandra Dottulio and Marion Kremers who were not – P1, P2, what did you end up as? Uh, I think after penalties, second and third. Second and third. You guys have kind of been duking it out over the last few days, so what's been going on? Who wants to talk? I mean, um, yeah, we've, we always come together on track, which uh, is a bit strange because I think I'm, I'm supposed to be a bit further up the front, but uh, this, this stuff happens. I messed up in qualifying. That's the only reason I'm starting further back, so um, I need to find my way to the front, and Sometimes that's a little bit difficult. Yeah, so funny you would bring up qualifying. We saw you in a wall. What happened with that? I um, got on the bow just a little bit too early. Just a silly mistake that I shouldn't make, but uh, that's what I did. So. All right, Alessandro, what do you have to say about this? Uh, at least I don't wall it in qualifying on my own. So I think qualifying went quite good. Yeah. Pretty final. He, he kind of he did a good move around the outside. And yeah. then... After that, he was just blocking for no reason. He had no pace, so I'm not sure what he was doing there. Yeah, you're kind of giving the old guy a run for his money, aren't you? Yeah, he's getting old. He's going to retire soon, so. Do you have anything to say about that? I mean, they, they say good wine rises like old, so old wine tastes better, so, um, yeah. Ooh. Well, that's that. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll let you duke us out back in the tent. Back to you, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one, Those guys. Those guys are having way too they much are, fun. They man. really are. They are really living up this rivalry that they uh, they they're putting off. They're yeah. selling this. Um, good job for Gina to too. For change my name to Vince McMahon yeah. over here. <laughs> We've uh, we got some guys. Everyone's having a good time. The what the nice weather it seems to bring out the good vibes in everybody and the good personalities yep. and. Um, we're having a blast down here with the Florida Winter Tour. Let's see the field come on down for Rock Masters. William Isaias, Danny Roberts in the front row. It is International Motorsports and Rawlison Performance Group. Green flag in the air to turn number one. And whoa, what a dive bomb by Danilo Romalo. He just hip checked the entire second row. Wow. And we've got, uh, I believe, Scott Carapalotti. 
together with one of the Burrell R drivers in one. Let's go back to the leaders here headed for turn number six. So Romalo, David, they must have all got stripped up. It is a, a big time shakeup. Frank Run goes up a number of positions. Scott Roberts, is that the driver we've got away in the lead? How in the world is this shaking? I know he's in second. Look at the lead for William Isaias. Yellow flags into turn number one and a 1.5 second gap for William Isaias. Ron John, I mean, this, these Masters guys, they, they watch the seniors and like, yeah. no, 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 no. Hold, hold our hold our beers here. Let's let's go put on a let's, better show than that. And, and let's go they show them how it's right done. to it. Oh yes. my gosh! And again, it's uh, one of the drivers gets out there in front, allows everybody else to battle back behind him. And Isaiah is already out there, uh, 1.5 second lead there, just after the first lap. Well, and the thing is, he didn't even get out in front. It no, was a matter of uh, uh, Danilo Romalo having a bonsai move down the inside into turn number one on the start. He just had to out-qualify these guys <laughs> yes. and was gifted a 1.5 second lead as there is uh, Robertson losing a position, I believe, that time. David LaPlante, or David LaPlante in the premier karting number 680, up six spots from ninth to third. Good run. Because of all the contact all around him, Frank Runco is up two into fifth. Uh, Robertson, I believe, just fell behind Runco here this lap, so Runco up to fourth. Roberts, uh, Scott Roberts trying to run down William Isaias. We'll give you an update on the lap times this time, and we kind of have the camera just focused on this, this group back here. I mean, this is not the lead pack. This is the pack behind also, the lead. Also, I see is. Renato yader David back down in the seventh spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, he also he didn't have a very good start there at all. He was in fourth, so when Romalo sent it down the inside, he hip-checked the driver who started second, which was Robertson, and then on top of that, it backed up the whole second row, gotcha. third row, and just kind of wash them all out wide. And that allowed the guys like David LaPlante from ninth and uh, uh, Frank Runco from seventh to kind of go underneath everybody as they all got chipped up. But now, like you said, Renato David, nice crossover, nice exit, closing in. He's going to have a good shot at Runco into turn one. Oh, and he tried oh, to get there. Man, Runco did he ever. slammed the door shut. Here he goes in two. He'll get by. Nice move there. Turn two is becoming more of a passing zone than I thought it was going to be here this weekend. Marion Kremers was the first one we really saw make a pass over there. And um, everybody else has been able to kind of follow suit a little bit. So now your updated order with four laps complete, working lap number five. Isaiah's is lead is still 1.5 seconds back to Scotty Roberts. Roberts has gotten away from David LaPlante by about a second. There's Roberts going through. Here is uh, LaPlante under pressure from Romalo. Romalo will go by and LaPlante lets him go nicely. And then here comes uh, Renato David. So the two Brazilians carving their way up the field the quickest. Danny Robertson kind of trapped down in the seventh spot. Don't know if he got any damage uh, that time. But uh, Danilo Romalo into third. Ooh, David, a little love tap there to LaPlante. Let him know he's there. Kind of caught him at an awkward spot of the racetrack where you can't really pass all too well. And so he has to wait all the way till turn number one or turn number two to get by, and that allows Danilo Romalo to get further up the road. Here goes David for the spot. Not able to get it there. Does he try and two? He does. Gets through nicely. So LaPlante drops the fifth under fire from Frank Runco as well. I was going to say, it looked like Frank was trying to go right along with Danilo. Not able to fully do it there, but he's close, Ron John, very close. Halfway in, halfway home, watching this kind of recovery drive for the two Brazilians. While uh, the two Americans in front of them, William Isaiah. Oh, we got problems for the 622. That is Paul Montepoli. The Team Ferris Racing driver is out. So uh, back up front. Scott Robertson, second. Purple lap that time by. Two tenths quicker. Picked up just a little bit there that last time by. But he needs Don't more. think he quite has enough laps, but we'll have to see. He'd right now be about two laps short to catching that guy right there, William Isaiah. The gap, 1.4 seconds. Two tenths better would mean he needs seven laps to get there. He's got four and a half. So he needs to really turn up the afterburners here and get there here before the end of this one, which is possible, especially if Isaiah uh, intends on backing off to save the tires. I mean, you can see the gap is closing. He's definitely closing. Let's see this time. Isaiah slowed down. Three tenths better. 1.2 even. Romalo even a little bit faster. But he's, he's, Romalo should be too far back, I think, to get involved. It's, it's going to come down to if... Scotty Roberts can continue to be three-tenths or more better uh, than William Isaiah. And, 
And as of last time he was, I don't know if this time he's as good, but we'll keep a close eye on the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed here. Yeah, the next time by, although we'll have three to go. The former Red Bull Je uh, Pro Jet Ski rider, currently P2, hunting down one of the longtime go-karting names here in William Isaiah, synonymous with karting in South Florida over the last two to three decades. You know, one of the things I've noticed out on the track as I look out towards that turn number two we've been talking about and how all of a sudden it's becoming a passing zone. Look at the barrier to the inside as we look out onto the track. The amount of tire marks along the inside there that by them making that inside move and using that barrier almost as a part of it and able to make a couple of passes there. We'll have to keep our eye on that as we continue out throughout the weekend. Definitely. But of course, right now, the, the, it seems like the main passing area has been right here in turn number one. But Isaiah continues to stretch it out. Uh, well, actually, again, he, he did pick, pick up just a little bit. He had to go down to the fourth spot to see Renato David uh, put down the uh, fastest lap there, went purple. But it's Isaiah, Roberts, Romalo, David, LaPlante, Robertson, Runco, Montoya. Hadn't talked a whole lot about Frederico. Up there now in that eighth spot, Glauber Garino in the uh, ninth, and uh, Lucas Iglesias right now will hang on to that tenth spot. And here, white All flag. All right, white flag is out. White flag out there for William Isaiah. That was a nice tight shot of him working the steering wheel through turn number one, two, over to three and four. For a moment, Scott Roberts was consistently reeling him in, then he's kind of faded and I think settled in to bringing home a second place result as uh, they work their way through the back sector of the racetrack here. William Isaias qualifies on the pole and it pays off here with all the chaos off the start. He is untouched, leads every lap, 12 in, 12 complete, bam! Winner of heat number one here in Rock Masters. Great one there for uh, William. Picking up from uh, Pompano Beach, he had such a great weekend. Of course, uh, ended up that Renato took the, the victory in the finals. But uh, again, already kicking off a great weekend there for William Isaias, the international motorsports driver. Takes the Masters in heat race number one. Scott Roberts ends up in second. Daniel Romalo in third. Renato David in the fourth position with David LaPlante in fifth. So again, 12 laps complete there for our Masters. And that'll do it. So we'll take another break here. Master uh, Rock is complete. Micro Rock next up on deck before the juniors, the VLR Masters, and the shifters come your way here. A little more cleanup, a little more carts off the racetrack, and a few more lining the grid here. The palm trees are nice and still. Small breeze here in St. Petersburg, Florida, and the racing rolls on. I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere. Uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together.
Maryland, USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching, to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Florida, here live for round number two of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. My name's Andrew Clements on the call with uh, my good buddy and broadcasting partner here this weekend, as always, Ron John Eversoll. Ron John, the racing's been in some of these heat races pretty tame, just trying to get through turn number one, and then things have spread out. And that Rock Senior and then, race. And then, and then and some then of Rock them. Math, been, I mean, right. they have been all out wars here because this track, it's a 35 to 39 second racetrack. It's short, it's tight, it's bumpy, it's tough to pass. And when it's tough to pass and you have to pass, it gets a little bit physical. Yes, indeed. And that's exactly what happened in a couple of races. But uh, don't think we had a whole lot of damage to any of those cards, but a couple spun around. Yeah. yeah, we had a little bit of that and, you know, just about all of these races so far, but uh, nothing bad. No, no. Nothing no. really bad at all. I mean, everybody's been pretty good so far with, uh, you know, their passes and stuff. So. No, every, everyone's been pretty good. I mean, honestly, the racing's been hard, but it's been mostly clean. Yes, it Let's has see been. if the Micros can do the same. Let's Rocco do it. Simone, David Zhao, not going to go green this time by because they're still not fully happy with the way the field was forming up right there. So they're going to send them around again. Uh, Mateus Romalo, Jose Carlos Murad will make up row number two. Jackson Morley and Santiago Namnum, row three. Drew Waltz and Alexander Procunia will start 7th and 8th to make up row number 4. That is Rafael Canas and Maxwell Macha rounding the top 10. Royce Vega and Juan Gar Garciars in the Orsolan Racing number 21 will be row number 6. Then it's Declan uh, Dionarn. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Dion, Dion Arain. Yes. Dion exactly. Arain. Yeah, Dion, Dion Arain. Arain. Yeah, yeah, Declan Deonor on from Goodwood Cartways. Right? Yeah, <laughs> alongside Justin DeLucia, the teammates there, the 24 and the 48 car. Then it's Tyrone Kepper Jr. in the AKT Racing Team number 41, your round one winner. He starts deep in this micro rock field, mid-pack. And we've got problems for the 66 of Alexander Procunia. That just exited the frame there. Looks he's like going to able to get it back on there, yeah. And, yeah, he's going to try and get up there, but he's, he's past the commitment line. So I don't know if he's going to be able to start where he was slotted, which was inside the top 10, or if he starts at the rear. He's going to try and go where he should be. Let's see what that does to the green. Is it going to get him a penalty? They're going to not let him in line. He's going to have to back off, and we're not going to go green. So luckily, a godsend for Procunia, trying to get the motor to, to stop bogging down on him. That's what the issue is. He's, he's going full throttle, and the thing just is dying on him uh, as soon as he puts the power down. Very heads up on our starter there. That would not have been a very good start for everyone. No, very heads we up We had a there. couple of folks, you know, again, the driver's still trying to squeeze his way back in there, Alex Pacrina. Yeah. Not I, quite I, able to do that, and I thought once you got past the commitment zone, and he has you usually have to end up in the back of the pack, right? And Procunia's had a, a host of engine issues here to start 2022, and, and I, you hate to see it for this kid because he's – he came into the season with a lot of promise. He was, you know, each year, if you're kind of in that fifth to tenth place bracket, 
Uh, normally the kids running P1 to P5 move up to the next age group. Now we got another driver that stalled. That is the number 70. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't, the 75, I don't think that was the 75 of Gavin Decay, but it might have been. Um, in any case there, Procunia I don't think is really going to be able to do much besides probably pull off to the side of the racetrack or into the scales when we go green. Because I think they're going to have to go green this time. But smart decision, like you said, by our head flag with Bobby Radovoy. A happy early birthday to our good buddy Bobby oh, Radovoy, no turning 32 years old tomorrow. Wow. Uh, our Rock Cup official superstar I flagman. I remember those days. Those were great. <laughs> Coming to the green flag, into the tram lines here. Rocco here Simone. Here we go. Green flag. And just saw off the side of the screen, a little bit of an issue here for more drivers deep in the field as uh, back goes Drew Waltz here. He got kind of punted wide off the start. And they're going to go side by side, almost for the lead. Good attempt by Rocco Simone. Better attempt by David Zhao. And the Goodwood Cartways, number 27, leads the field through six. Well, it didn't take Zhao long to get right back around Rocco. Kick Rocco back a spot. Perhaps even two, I believe. We'll have to see if that's Romalo has gotten in between uh, Simone and, I mean, uh, Zhao and Simone. And here they come back. But for the first time, going nine laps here. Looks like we're going to have a change of second position there. The number seven of Mateus Romalo got around Simone. Nice pass there by some uh, Romalo. And then look at that. More drivers looking for a way by. Here's Royce Vega, ultimate opportunist. He gets by on Jackson Morley, who was trying to cross him over. Now Morley crosses over Vega, but he'll be on the outside into six. So Vega will complete that pass. Nice move by Royce Vega to move up the order. He gets one spot higher inside the top five. Declan Dionar, uh, Dionarine, <laughs> seven spots. I got to get that name right because the Goodwood Cartways driver is almost into the top five while his teammate, David Zhao, leads lap number two. David Zhao had gone purple the last time by. This time we look in as Juan Carlos Murad, the super tune driver. And the number 18 went purple that time by. Fastest out there on the track. Still Zhao, Romalo, Simone, Vega, Morley, your top five. Uh, two laps in the bank, working lap number three of nine. Yeah, working deeper into this one here. Three laps to be completed this time by, as you mentioned. And we're watching Rocco Simone trying to hang on to the tail end of uh, Mateus Romalo. Let's give you the updated run order of your top ten. David Zhao still leads here. Got about a half second gap back to Romalo and Simone. Then we got this three car group led by Royce Vega, Jackson Morley, Declan Dionaron. Rafael Canas up two spots from ninth to seventh. He runs further back from that group, about a second or so away. Alexander Ratushny up 11 positions from nearly 20th to eighth on the racetrack in the U Race comp cart. Then it is Drew Waltz in ninth. Gavin Decay up seven spots in the 75 is 10th. Looked like we had somebody take a black flag at the start finish. I believe that was Juan, uh, Jose Carlos Murad. Not really sure ex exactly why, but nonetheless, they've taken him off track. Leaders just back by the start finish. Romalo went purple, a 40. It's hard to see in that purple on the screen, but nonetheless, he went purple that time by. David Zhao still hanging on to the front. Look at Rattuzzi, as you'd mentioned, up to that ninth spot. Ten position move so far for Alexander. Great run so far from him. Seven spots right now for uh, Royce Vega, the number 33, the Bennett driver, right now sitting in fourth. Again, uh, working lap number five. Getting ready to come back by the start finish here. Only nine laps here for our micros. Heat race number one. In round number two here, the Florida Winter Tour for 2022. Thanks to our friends at Vortex, Levanto Cart Tires, Rock Cup USA, OMP, Eni Oil, all of our sponsors. Thanks for everything you do for our sport. We greatly appreciate you. And here we go, battle for the lead. Mateus Romalo clear on David Zhao. That's for the top spot in this three-car group here in Micro Rock. Zhao drops to second. And little Romalo, Romalo Jr. Oh, oh, problems for David Zhao and into the wall. David Zhao pounds the outside retaining wall. That was off the front bumper of Rocco Simone, but I, I, that was such a weird way that cart made an impact with it. I gotta think there was something else that was going Certainly, on. Certainly, all of a sudden, it just kind of just turned to the right it on him. It just hooked on him. 
whatever. And aren't those teammates? Uh, no, no, no. no. Okay. Not, not teammates there. But um, Simone, in, in any case, um, didn't lose too much time. So he's still close to the bumper and, and obviously frustrated David Zhao. Unfortunate for the kid who qualified on the pole and led the early portion of this seat race here. And that, of course, makes those barriers a little bit awkward as the leaders come by. But now a two-driver fight here with two laps to go. Double sticks up, seven complete, nine total. Mateo Romalo has got a cart length back to Rocco Simone. Romalo looking good as he heads through turn number two, heading for three and four. And Rocco right there. Again, remember watching Rocco the first time he came and ran uh, national events with us. And uh, to say the least, he was not up in front. <laughs> As I told his dad, once again, tossing your kids to the wolves, are we? So he's, he's certainly earned his way up here. So good to see him up here battling for the lead. Yeah, let's see it here through the final sector. Romalo pulls back, keeps that cart length buffer back to Simone. Rocco Simone trying to close up with the toe. Into turn number one, he gets in deep. Nice exit out of one for Simone. Needs another good corner. Turn two is good. Into three, he's close, doesn't pull the trigger. So he's got a shot into six. He's going to need to get aggressive with it. Romalo gets a good exit. Does Simone want to go? He does not. Romalo defends a little bit. And uh, not the best exit through six there for Rocco Simone. That gap pulls to two car lengths. Headed through seven. Turn number eight. Into nine and ten. Final time. Danilo Romalo's little one, Mateus Romalo, Junior Romalo, wins Reet one and micro. Bam! Wow. Rocco Simone finishes second. Royce Vega third. Jackson Morley fourth. Teclan Dionarine up eight positions to seventh, or to, uh, to fifth. Drew Waltz makes up a spot back, gets sixth. Gavin Decay, ten spots gained, up Great to seventh. Win. Maxwell Macha is up two. That was the driver who crossed the line first before the penalty came in round number one. He, so he finishes eighth, picks up a couple. Yep. Alexander Ratushny up ten positions to ninth. Justin DeLucia up four. The, uh, the big losers, unfortunately, there. Tyrone Kemper Jr., your championship point leader in round one winner with the DNF also in round number one, joining Jose Carlos Murad, who started in the first two rows, and David Zhao. So half of your top contenders with a good run, half of them with a bad one here in heat number one. We'll talk to maybe some of them and also keep our eye on the junior rockers as they are up next here. The racing continues live from St. Petersburg. More coming your way. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits the driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're going to be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at RevPerformanceMaterials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials.
Maryland, USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Hi, I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere. Uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just in knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together. Maryland, USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top ranked national level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, 
and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novus Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits a driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're gonna be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, and on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking... Welcome back here, Junior Rock coming to the green flag. Aiden Ingram out of the inside. Yal Vagar out of the outside. Michael Costello, Stephen Miller. Here we go, green... No, no green that time. Bobby Ridevoy did not like that one. And I'll be honest, I didn't either. That it was... Looked like we had a... That was packed up, but yes. fast. And that could have gotten ugly down in turn number one. The sun's starting to set here at Tropicana Field. We're getting a little bit of glare down here where we're at, which means the drivers are going to have it a little bit in their eyes coming down the front straightaway here, which should be pretty gnarly for a lot of them uh, since that is the main passing zone, Ron John, is down right to turn one and into yeah. two. Yeah, it's going to make it difficult just happening to notice that the sun is breaking through the clouds a little bit and baking turn number one. And yes, you can just, as we look down there ourselves, we can see all that glare off the track. And the biggest thing is just that, you know, your marks here are right next to a barrier. You miss a mark because the sun gets in your eyes on a regular racetrack, you drop a wheel in the grass, you hit right. the curb. Here, you hit the barrier, you got a bent tie rod, bent axle, bent chassis, hopefully none of the above for these guys, but it's a lot of them. Let's see if they make it through turn one. Y'all, Vagara gets in and Aiden Ingrata gets loaded up and we are stacking them and racking them in turn one. Three together here that get stuck at the end of that one. The 217 of uh, Lorenzo Castillo and more. And here comes your field there on your screen. That's Leonardo Scorpioni and uh, I believe one of the Nash Motorsports drivers as well. Right here. That was Charlie Smith. Oh, we got a... And that'll do it for one here, the 242 Charles Leclerc cart. The official going to have to drag it off the racetrack here. Turn one hopefully doesn't get clipped as the leaders are coming by. Yellow flags in the air. Luckily, they're going to miss them all. But that's the problem with this short racetrack here, Ron John. There is just no nowhere, time yeah, nowhere to go. for the officials to be able to really clear the racetrack or give you a chance to get back going. I mean, you've got to be under power or get the heck out of the way. Absolutely. I mean, they were bearing down on him really quick, too. And that a lot of them take that inside line there going through turn number one. So he was in a very vulnerable position. Great job. They're able to get that cart back up over the barrier and out of the way. Well, let's see him through turn number one here. Aiden Ingrata did a good job kind of mastering what he could to get out of the first corner. Nice dive bomb into three. Not going to get it done. Yal Vigaris slams the door shut. And the Orsolon Racing Tony Kart driver holds the lead over the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed. 
Stephen Miller's Chad Dawkin racing number 273 sits in third. Then we go back to Jorge Ortiz's super tuned Tony Kart in fourth. Michael Costello on board the Benick Eos Kart is in fifth. Although he had a little mistake there and now is going to come under fire. Here goes a challenge for the lead in Grata. Again, can't get it done behind him. Uh, Costello able to hold back Leonardo Escorpione and it's a big gap back to Charlie Smith and Sebastian Weldon. So kind of a four driver breakaway a little bit, but really it's a six driver break as Ingrana moves Vegara this time, puts the bumper to him, checks up there through seven as they jump the ski jump 90. At least that's what the drivers are calling it because they're getting air in that 90 are degree really? left-hander. Yeah, they are, they are hopping over a piece of pavement. So here we come down the front stretch, this time by pointed black flag. Ooh, that was to a Scorpione. So Leo Scorpione with a warning. Meanwhile, a little chimp for third. That's Ortiz, your round one winner. Jorge Ortiz goes by for P3. Nice move by Jorjito as uh, the field goes through turn number six. And Aiden Ingrata, half a cart back. Can he go to the bottom? No, Vegara blocks. Ingrata gets into him and tucks oh. him, and he goes over him. Ingrata throws it in on Yao Vegara, and we'll see if the officials have anything to say about that one or if it knocked Ingrata's bumper in. That definitely was some heavy contact on the right front end. And uh, we've also got to watch out here because uh, one driver all the way at the back, Lorenzo Castillo, is uh, going to go a lot down here really soon. And we got a problem outside of turn number one. It is the Motes board number 227 of Christian Meyer. So one more Burrell Art here bites the dust, and that is the Motes board entry as Ortiz now tries to play chaser to Aiden Ingrata. Let's see it this time, halfway, six in, six to go. One cart length back. Boy, they the are battling out here for sure. Yeah. You know, we had talked earlier about how the fact get out in front, somewhat be able to walk away. Didn't happen this time. These guys were on top of one another going into turn number one, although we just look like... Uh, Ingrata's pulling, but look at this, is lap traffic. This is what tripped up That's, Jeremy okay. Fletcher. So luckily the lapper are going to give away to the leaders very nicely. So big credit there here to Lorenzo Castillo. Unfortunate that he got tagged in that opening corner incident, but a, a, a big sign of respect there from Lorenzo to let the leaders by the way he did. Right. Unfortunately, I don't know if we'll see a battle because he was so classy because yeah. we needed him to play pick uh, and block the way for Ingrata to back him up and give Ortiz a shot because Aiden Ingrata... He is pulling on this entire field. And we've got more problems on the front. No, that was not problems. Sorry, that was uh, Castillo letting him by. But, yeah, in, in Grada, he is he has doubled, nearly tripled that lead already here in a couple laps. Aiden in Grada, we call him the professor. Studier of, uh, of race, that's for sure. Young man just absolutely... Continues to pull out, only a half second lead. Uh, looks like it was Michael Costello that went purple the last time by the 223. Michael right now in fourth. Escar Pony up four positions right now in fifth. Kind of look a little bit further down the order here. Look at some of the guys that are running really hard. Nolan Hofrichter up nine positions right now in 20th. We've got uh, Amelia Chandler. How about Amelia now up eight positions right now. She remains in that 17th position. Escarponi up four spots in fifth, but Aiden Ingrata. And they, they cut a little bit into his, uh, into his lead that time. Still about a half a second lead. Go down to Sebastian Weldon. Hadn't talked a whole lot about Sebastian. Now up into that sixth, excuse me, seventh position and went purple that time by the JC Karting driver. Now let's see, Aiden Ingrata backed up his pace a little bit last time by. Ortiz picked up a tenth and a half. Now they're coming to see Two laps to go at the stripe. Ortiz is coming. I don't know if Ingrata himself is feeling like he can back the the, top, uh, the field up and back his pace up, or if he's digging for more. Again, both drivers, their front bumpers look pretty loose, Ortiz especially. So I would not be surprised to find some pushback penalties inside this lead group. And again, we don't know if the officials are going to say anything about the contact between Ingrata and Yal Vagara in the back hairpin, right. because that, that was an aggressive move for the lead by the professor. We'll certainly wait to see what happens with that. As we well know, it's never over until it's over. And that means they get a 
They got to get to the scale line without getting that, that ugly pink or yellow slip. Right. <laughs> so let's see. White flag this time. Here comes Ingrata to turn one. Still at about, about that half second. Xander not able to really pick up a whole lot there for Jorge. Yeah, not really gaining enough. He's, he's decent through the opening hairpins, but this is where Ingrata opens it up. It's, it's coming out of four into five, and then this run through six and seven. I mean, he just rolls that section so good. No matter where anyone else is pace-wise with chassis or engine, they just can't keep up, and he's going to put another in the books. Aiden Ingrata is going to go perfect on the day. Two poles, two heat Bam. wins. Wow. Nicely done run. by the Red Speed driver. Ortiz up five spots from his starting position of seventh to finish P2. Yalvagara drops one spot back, finishes third. Michael Costello fourth. Escorpione fifth. Miller sixth. Weldon seventh. Christian Cameron eighth. Teddy Musella ninth. And G3 Argyros uh, rounds the top ten. And really uh, not a ton of shuffling. Uh, no, not you really. Know, I, I mean, it, overall, about all the contenders stayed right around where they were just one or two up or down uh, here or there the biggest one being a scorpione up four right and again we'll see where the penalties land so uh ron john junior rock's done we're gonna send our jenna tommy down to talk to some of the top finishers there maybe talk to jorge ortiz who talked to ingrata today uh maybe talk to michael costello and also to talk to the shifter rock guys because they're going to be coming up right after these boys the vlr masters two more races left here We've had a lot of action. I, I, I got to believe we're going to have some more. I do believe. I, I, and, and the weekend is really shaping up to be a heck of a weekend. I, I, I'm starting to feel it. Again. You, know, as you can start to feel a little bit of the momentum, a little of the adrenaline starting to pick up. I can kind of see it in the races now because these are counting. Right. No longer practice. No, they're not practice. And I think the biggest thing this weekend that we're seeing right now is that even though the drivers, every interview we talk to, the track's rough. It's tough to right, pass, right. Ah, you know. I mean, they're racing, and, and and even in places they didn't think they could pass, they're making passes happen. It, it's looking like it's going to be a, a physical, a rough, yes. and definitely a bump and grind type of main event on Sunday. Um, but I think we're going to see some racing. Now, that's at least in the single speed classes. Right. What Shifter Rock is going to look like, completely unknown. But I got to believe those guys are going to be on each other because at this point they know if they let the pull sitter get away, I mean, and, right. and just rack up heat win, heat win, heat win, I mean, they're going to get a lot of championship points. So, again, we're going to send it to commercial. When we come back and the track is cleared, VLR Master will go green here for heat number one, live from St. Petersburg. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. Here we go, VLR Master back live from St. Petersburg. It is the second round of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Laurentio Mardan and Christian Vomir make up the front row after uh, Caden Goodridge was sent to the tail following post-race in, or post-qualifying inspection. So he'll be looking to work his way forward as again the driver qualified on the outside of the front row initially. Mardan's been dominant. 
was dominant in Vegas, swept every session in Pompano. Here he goes, round two, race number one of the weekend. And it's a nice start for the Techno Kart gang, and they'll get into one and two as uh, slotting into third will be Mark Pavon, but he's under pressure and loses that spot to Andrew Valenzano. And the Nolan Bauer Motorsports 703 moves into third. Mordon to the lead. Didn't take Lauren too, too long. No, he not. He and his teammate able to get out there in front, he and Christian Vomir. Not long at all for Laurentiu Mardan. So let's see them uh, head through the hairpins here this time. And Laurentiu Mardan will come around. One lap complete. Ron John, 11 laps to go here in heat number one. All right, coming down past the start finish line. Here comes Laurentiu Mardan. Again, the techno kart drivers, both he and Kristen Vomir in those techno karts. And again, it was our, our leader right now that had gone uh, purple that first time by. He's already stretched out to a half second lead. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Alex Dalbon now in the third position, up a couple of spots already. Caden Goodrich, who uh, had been dropped back down in the or starting order at least, is now starting to make his way up, sits in the sixth position. Again, we're oh, going 12 laps. We got one pounded into the wall here. It's, uh, it's a TV cart. It's the 773 of Duke Brino. It looks like it may be Sorgio Vani. No, that's an intrepid, my mistake. It's the Goodwood Cartway, uh, Cartways entry. And he has nosedived the barrier. I'm trying to see where he's at. It looks like it's going into turn number eight in the back corner. Yes, in the very back corner there. It looks like he's able to get it back around. Yeah, that's an awk. Oh, no, it's halfway on the straightaway, coming out of seven. Wow. Look at how far he's pushed the barriers back there as the leaders come through. My goodness. Boy, he must have absolutely pasted it. I know I heard the, bo the boom, but... Yeah, the black flag got to come out here this time for the 773, and they're going to try and clear him out. Mardan going to catch him and get by him into two, and Vomir goes by as well and gets to benefit a little bit by Mardan kind of carving the way. And he pull into the scales? He did, so that'll clear out this battle for third, led by Alex Dalbon, who's up two spots. Under pressure, though, here comes Mark Pavon. No, not that time. And then it's the... Uh, uh, 703 of Andrew Valenzano and then Caden Goodridge. So three, four, five, six right here while Christian Vomir and Laurentiu Mardan continue to pull away down the front stretch. Four laps completed, eight laps to go here in BLR Master. Boy, Laurentiu just continues to be solid. Solid on the track, solid in the cart. 782, that techno cart feeling really good in his hands. A 37, 520 the last time by. Best time so far is uh, for Andrew Valenzano, uh, 38-172. Andrew, that is, actually sits in that fifth position. Again, Mardan, Vomir, Dalbon, Alex up a couple of positions now in third. Meanwhile, just put lap number five in the bank. Next time by, they'll be getting the double sticks here at the start finish. They'll be their halfway point. Again, just going 12 laps here for the VLR Masters. Keeping an eye on our leader. Yeah, and uh, as well, again, this grouping here, three, four, five, six, Alex Dalbon, Andrew Valenzano, Caden Goodridge, uh, and Galo Barros, who has fallen back from the pack here, all, all trailing Mark Pavon in the 754. But halfway in, halfway home, like you said, six down, six to go. Alex Dalbon and the Los Brothers, 721. Oh, Goodridge up and over the Nolan Bauer Motorsports machine, and they're still stuck together. Don't think he's going to be able to get off of him. Oh, there he goes. There you go. Excuse me. Oh, a little, uh, little bit of hand gestures right there, too. Was that my bad or hi, I like you or uh, I think that was, uh, uh, I, I didn't appreciate right. that. Right. <laughs> that was, uh, oh, it was one of those I, signs. I, 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 hope, I hope I, you know, don't right. see you later. Exactly. Even though I'm going to see <laughs> you later. <laughs> I don't run or run into you in the scale line. <laughs> or over you. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe I, maybe I do want to run into right, you. In the right, right, exactly. Know. Whatever, whatever he was signaling. He That's certainly what we was. do know. That's He was sure. waving in some way here. We're going to see four to go this time. Eight complete. All led by this man. The 782 of Laurentiu Mardan. There comes the top two through. 
and it's a massive gap to the rest of the pack. We're talking nearly 10 seconds right now here as they come across the stripe, built up over just eight laps. The Techno Kart drivers dominant in VLR Master. You know, Xander, I'm not really sure what happened to the 703, but if you look, his whole balance in the front is completely smashed down on his cart. Yeah, he was involved in the wreck. Was he, that was one of them? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, all of a sudden he comes around, it's like, whoa, where'd the rest of your cart go? I thought you were paying attention. No, Roger. I wasn't paying attention. To the I was over here looking at this. No, but anyway, as he comes around, <laughs> it looks like somebody had sat right on the front of the cart for sure. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, goodness. Well, whoever, whoever did, we, we've got some Cart Chaser XXL search they can, they can get. <laughs> no, but uh, in all seriousness, yeah, he uh, definitely got a, a damaged nose NASA panel right there for Andrew Valenzuela. I'm surprised he was able to get back in front of Caden Goodridge, or maybe Goodridge let him by, but okay. in any case, two laps to go this time by. Mardan still your leader as he takes him out of six. Uh, Vomir in second, and uh, we're gonna send our Jenna Tommy on down to the uh, grid to chat with some of our top rock shifter drivers. Oh! And so as they go through here, a lap and a half to go. Now with some contact, a little bit battling for third, but uh, right now we stay green. Laps winding down, just a couple more left here for our VLR Masters. And uh, as they come on through, Laurentiu Mardan. White flag in the air one more time around. He's catching the lap traffic. Manages the gap back there to Christian Vomir. Almost a two second lead for Lauren too. Here we go, headed through turn number seven. Over to turun number eight. Vomir definitely dialing, th dialing things back on the final lap. I mean, their gap is 12 seconds. They've got plenty to burn. And they're gonna happily take this Techno Kart USA 1-2, the co-owners of the brand in the US. Bam! Put it on top in VLR Master. 1-2 for the Techno Karts. He's just been so strong. Really, really been impressive. And of course that show he put on for us out in Las Vegas. Unf unfortunately, the, the ending wasn't the way he wanted it to end, but what a tremendous weekend for him, except for obviously the, the final. Definitely. But well he's lead. come down here and showed, uh, he's the guy to beat here when it comes to the VLR Masters. Rock Shifter uh, getting set to go green here. They're gonna be next when we come back. So AJ Myers ripped one out. Qualified on the pole. Danny Formal, Jake French. Well, they start right around him and they were within six hundredths. It is that close. Less than a tenth back to find the next best. Vincenzo Saracino and Michael Stevens, a privateer operation. They're inside the top 10. 20 plus drivers in the Rock Shifter division. The headline class of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. And it's up next here on Kart Chaser. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance kart shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching, to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit 
and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Car Class is an advanced digital training program that suits a driver who's just starting out in the sport all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're gonna be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know when to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials, engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at revperformancematerials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials. Here we go, ladies and gents. Rock Shifter, heat number one. 12 laps will be one of the shortest uh, races of their season, with it being a 34 second racetrack. We are talking seven minutes tops. It is uh, a track with two, maybe three passing zones for these guys at best, and it is one of the bumpiest tracks they're going to race on all year, also. They're going to make their way over into the starting lines. AJ Myers aggressively. Warming the tires up, and it's the big three. A.J. Myers in the Magic Kart, number 428. Danny Formal in second. Jake French in third. Vincenzo Saracino puts his Magic Kart to the outside of row two. Then it's David Greco to the inside of row three alongside Colin Daly's DR Kart. We look further back. Michael Stevens, the privateer Burrell Art here. Formal, a little adjustment on the left rear of the radiator as he gets set. Myers is locked and loaded. We're behind our head flagman. We've got every last driver getting into position. Let's go to the head flagman, Bobby Radavoy. Happy birthday, and we're green for heat number one. And Danny Formal gets the whole shot for a guy who struggled to get off the line. And he in uh, Pompano, he gets the one from the outside groove. And Formal is your leader. Oh, we got problems on the front stretch. Blake Hunt. Looks like another card over here as well. Looks like that is the 424. Yeah, Blake Hunt and Talon Yockel out. Yockel, yes. As we look up front here, Gianna Torino with a nice start. He's the best of the rest here behind the big three. So Torino with a monster start from row four moves up the order as Formal leads over Myers and French. Boy, where did Gianna come from? I have no idea. Gianna Torino. That's a big move in the first lap there. Up four positions already. Beast of a start for Gianna Torino as Danny Formal has uh, gotten a nice and healthy gap here on cold tires. Very impressive. So let's see what he can do as uh, Torino is going to come under fire from Vincenzo Saracino pretty soon. Now, Gianna Torino is a master at making that car really, really wide. So while we go back and forth between the battle of the big three and the battle behind, we'll keep you posted on how good Torino's defensive driving can be. That time by... Formal, one-tenth quicker than A.J. Myers. Yeah, Gianno's got uh, Vincenzo right there on his back bumper. Boy, Danny, what a tremendous start there off the finish. I mean, off the start, down into turn number one, able to get out around A.J. Myers. 
and heading into turn one, able to get out around him on that. Pretty quick off the start. Yeah, let's see it here as they come out and onto the front straightaway here. Three laps already gone. It is that quick. Looks like Jake French was the fast cart that time by. Went purple. Vincenzo Saracino got around Torino. Saracino back now into the uh, fourth position. Giano now back into fifth. Greco sixth. Steven seventh. Colin Daly in the eighth position. And Nathan Nicholson up a couple of spots right now in ninth. And Baylor Griffin resides in that tenth spot. But still, out in front, Danny Formal, the leading edge motorsports driver. Oh, and look at that. Vincenzo Saracino has gotten by Gianna Torino. So he moves up into fourth. Here's David Greco starting to work on Torino for fifth. The leaders are closing together. A.J. Myers has been chipping away at the gap built up by Formal. Last time, 300s better. The time before, a whole tenth. Jake French kind of even uh, to both of them there. And he's trying to come along for the ride with Myers. When Myers makes the move, it'll open up. Here's this again that we're on your screen. Fight for fourth on back with uh, Saracino, Torino, Greco, and Stevens. As Look at this, Myers is close here down the front stretch. I mean, he is getting down to less than two, three car lengths away. Tenth and a half better last time by. And yeah, I was gonna say, by, by the time he turns around and feels like he's getting something going on, it's gonna be the end of the race. We're already getting ready to the next time by to pick up the halfway flags. As you said, maybe seven minutes in max. They get around here so quickly, a 34-3. 51 for your leader the last time by at the start finish. Danny Formal. Yeah, Formal needs to dig deep here and try and pull that pace back up a little bit because AJ Myers is closing into him. Two, three car lengths away for AJ. Across the stripe that time by. I think Formal was able to match him a little bit better pace wise. Six laps complete, six laps to go. Danny Formal, AJ Myers, four car lengths apart. Make it nearly five. Some interesting lines going into turn number one as these last laps get a little closer. Some folks definitely protecting that inside. Our leaders just now coming to the back part of the track, getting ready to turn down the front stretch once again, waiting for Danny to come back past the start finish. And I do believe that uh, AJ's picked up just a little bit. Yeah, it, it will uh, refresh our live timing here because for us, at least, we've kind of got frozen back on lap number five. But um, what a great run here for A.J. Myers to try and reverse the luck uh, of the start and reverse his run through uh, through Pompano. We, we talked to him this weekend. He said, yeah, the last couple times we just haven't really been able to figure out the Levanto tire, the new tire brand that uh, began uh, at the beginning of the Florida Winter Tour in 2021. This time by here, now we are down, I believe, to less than four to go. I tell you what, A.J. is right there. He's definitely picked up quite a bit there on Danny. And by the way, Michael Rivera's taking his card off the track. Don't know what the issue with there was, but T is pulled off. Yeah, at least from what I can tell here, the live timing might have just gone down for the, the, the live leaderboards. But nonetheless, Myers, you can see it on your screen. You don't need to look at the scoreboards. You can just watch the race and enjoy it. That gap is coming down. Three car lengths away. Here comes timing back. They've got it back up. And it's three laps to go. A.J. Myers is a cart length back. Last time Bly picks up another, uh, evens out actually. Stays at a 34, 2-4 to a 2-6. But he's a cart length away. He is trying to get there. Out on the track, it definitely looks like he is definitely picking up a little bit of room. Not much. And again, these guys are, are bouncing through half of this racetrack. I mean, it's just incredible uh, how physical it is on them. Now, Myers did not seem to get a really good exit. He's struggling no, he in the did. back hairpin compared to Formal. Two, two to go. But he's really good. Right there. <laughs> rolling that oh. speed through turn one. I mean, you could see how much he closes up in the center of the corner. Same thing through three and four. Really good out of that here. really good. For whatever Danny's doing back in turn number, se uh, turn number seven and eight, not this corner right here, but this double left-handed hairpin. The way Formal is able to get the great launch out and be a little more narrow than Myers, and I think Myers is learning that, is giving him the gap here. And as they come across the line, white flag Myers taking a look back. I think we may see him just kind of take it easy. I don't know. Oh, that wasn't easy there. He just no, bucked like a Bronco in the center of the corner. And it looks like he's still going to try and give Danny everything he can handle. He's putting the pressure on Formal. 
He's not little giving bit. Up. Look, look to the inside. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. That was close. Yeah, he, he, he tried it again. These guys are experimenting. They're not going to be able to know if they can pass it on if they don't try it. But right. it's not going to be enough here. Danny Formal and the Costa Ricans' points lead will increase here Damn. at round two. He wins heat one. Saracino fourth. Looks like Greco fifth. Stevens sixth. Daly seventh across the line. Gets uh, Torino on the final lap who drops back into eighth. Nathan Nicholson ninth. Baylor Griffin rounds the top ten. They're going to come into the scale line here. And uh, we'll head down to our Jenna Tommy shortly to see if she can talk to some of our top finishers here in Rock Shifter while they inevitably take a moment to breathe. So we'll take a short commercial break this time while they uh, get out, get situated, and Jenna can line an interview up for us as Danny Formal wins the opening heat race of the weekend by getting the whole shot and managing the gap to a hungry and quickly coming A.J. Myers. USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality, offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida, and the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. As the Western importer of the Praga and Formula K chassis brands, Leading Edge Motorsports is a high-performance card shop and race team with a simple mission. Teach others the joy of high-performance driving, supply our customers with the highest quality products and services, and most of all, win races. With our remarkable racing inventory, expert services, and top-ranked national-level team to back it up, we'll help to get your new kart racing package up and running fast. From arrive and drive service to kart preparation and driver coaching to the parts you need to get you back on the racetrack, Leading Edge Motorsports is the industry answer. Are you looking to up your web presence and digital footprint? Here at Novice Web, we help businesses elevate their value through custom software development, responsive website design, e-commerce, and ALML services. Our customer-focused engineers have over 10 years of experience. Let Novice Web design your first online impression. Overdrive Motorsports is more than just another full-service kart shop. Beyond our excellent service and more than 20 years of experience, we also offer a number of aftermarket parts and upgrades, such as our own proprietary pedal kit and the only aftermarket rock shifter mount in North America. Check us out online at odcarts.com. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits the driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're going to be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to break in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. 
we focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. If you're looking for top-grade equipment, look no further than Rev Performance Materials engine mounts, sprockets, and RK chains. Available online now at revperformancematerials.com and through a dealer near you. The highest quality material built to the highest quality standards. Rev Performance Materials. Maryland USA, a top-level performance team with unmatched hospitality. Offering a full-service driver development program with year-round testing available in Miami, Florida. And the official North America racing team of Parallel Racing Chassis. Chassis and parts available at ParallelUSA.com. I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere. Uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together. Well, we have uh, our Jenna Tommy here down with uh, Danny Formal. We'll send it on down to her in just a moment. Our Heat 1 winner getting the whole shot off the green. So uh, it's uh, sun going down here in St. Petersburg. And Formal, again, flipping the script from the worst starts out of the big three in Pompano to the best one here in the afternoon in St. Petersburg. Jenna? Thank you so much. I'm here with Danny Formal, who is the winner of our first heat in Senior Shifter. Do you want to tell me about that race? It looked a little wild. Well, it was a good start. Um, outside lane got a little better jump. Uh, AJ, a good start, but it was spinning the tires. Uh, I was able to pass him in lap one and kind of just lead the way for the 12 laps. Um, we're all running very, very similar times. Uh, he would catch me one lap, I would gap him another. But passing here is it's very, very difficult. Yeah. So I think the whole shot 
is everything. Mm -hmm. um, so no, happy. We did a couple of changes on the go-kart that were positive uh, from qualifying. Uh, went quicker than qualifying actually. So no, happy with the team, happy with the cart, and just going to keep working on You know, Greg Bell's been behind me since 2018. Everyone other that's helping me, uh, Mega Power, Sweet Tech, uh, everyone in Costa Rica watching, my family, everyone, seriously, just so thankful for their support. And, yeah, no, hopefully we could get a couple more wins and uh, get a bigger gap in the championship. Yeah, thank you so much, Jenny. We appreciate it, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jenna, here. And uh, that is going to wrap us up here for Friday from St. Petersburg. We are going to collect our equipment, pack it up for the night, and come back tomorrow. Heats two and three, and the pre-finals are all set for Saturday. Lots of racing action coming your way all day long, all weekend long, from Tropicana Field. For Ron John Amersole, the Cart Chaser crew, Kyle Cuthbertson behind the camera, along with Trevor Blue, my name's Andrew Clements. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow.